Good evening, folks. Welcome back to another hobby hangout. And I see you, Andy's late tonight, Scott. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, I was actually uh, flying by the seat of my pants, to be fair. I've been sitting watching some, let me just turn my microphone down a touch. Uh, I've been sitting watching some TV with, with my wife while I uh, ate dinner tonight, and it was like, oh crap, I've got five minutes. I better, I, better, I better get going. I better get going. Let's have a quick look in before we start on the painting and show you what I'm painting tonight. Let's see who we've got in the chat. I think I missed some, uh, let me, I might be able to. I wonder if this will let me go back a little bit further. So I think we had Peter Nicholas was in nice and early earlier on. Let me put the timestamps on so I can see when people were around. Um, yeah, so the first one, I think we had folks. Uh, ah, no, no, I've changed it. It's jumped. Anyway, we had Phil Wilkinson was in at like 25 to 7. Nice to see you early, mate. Uh, Peter Nicholas is in as well. Seen anything planned on the patent table for tonight? This is what he was asking with a chat earlier on. Um, Tony Howell says, Cooey! <laughs> Turned up a little early, hoping to paint some Dungeon Saga minis tonight. Although that's subject to demand of the boys. Oh, if you are around, Tony, let me know what Dungeon Saga minis you're painting. That's another box set I'll have to get to as well. Um, Scott's asking what we're painting tonight. I'll get to that, mate. Um, Christopher Warden saying, still working. Hope you're, uh, hope you're working nice and safe, mate. I hope you're okay. Claudio as well says, damn, I'm waiting to start painting. Maybe I just start a bit early. You can always start. You don't have to wait for me, folks. You can always crack on and get started. Um, Christian, good evening, Christian. Um, I, I'm not sure whether you were just in early, mate, or if you're still around now, but I uh, know that I'll get you in the chat if you are. Uh, King John was in as well saying, hey, everyone, how's it going? Um, Scott's in the tent in the garden tonight. Are you painting in the tent, mate? It's quite a, it's quite a nice night for it, to be fair. I'll give you that. King John says it's about 2.30 in Texas and these deliveries are bound. So I assume I'm a bit of a podcast in the background, mate, am I? Uh, Scott's saying hit the like button while we're all waiting. Much appreciated, buddy. Uh, excuse me if I'm just kind of... I'm not, I did this on the live stream on Monday as well. I wasn't picking my nose. I've got one hair from my moustache. It's curled up and it's, it's tickling the inside of my nose. Excuse me. Um, Steve Evans in as well saying evening. We've got Dirk in as well saying, all right, all right. I'll have a go at a mini. Um, and hi, everyone. Terry Bass, good evening, Terry. You'll have to tell me, Terry, whether it's Bass or Bass, because obviously it could be either. So please let me know if I, which, which one it is. Is it Bass like the fish or Bass like the guitar? Uh, good evening, young man. Mega brilliant congrats as I've just watched Monday's recording. Thank you very much, mate. He said, sorry I couldn't be there. I was having eye razor treatment. But really buzzing. I bet the razor, razor was buzzing as well, mate. I hope you're okay, bud. Um, Scott's seen as a draw for the mugs tonight or Monday. It's next Monday, mate. I'll, I'll give it a week because, to be fair, there's quite a lot of like my kind of regular viewers, if you like, who always catch up in the in the next few days afterwards. Uh, and, it, and it's fair to them as well, folk, uh, to those folks as well, rather. Um, Robert's saying, hey, guys, first time I was able to make this. Nice to see you, Robert. Hope you're well. Are you painting tonight, mate? Um... Um, Scotty and Andy's late. How very dare you, sir. I am never late. I always arrive precisely when I mean to, just like a wizard. James Zorm's in as well. He's saying, hello, greetings all. Happy for another painting chat. Um, let's see. Well, Phil Whitten's saying, hello all. Mark Coley says, hope everyone's well. Just poured a glass of vino. I'll be batch painting five slave orcs tonight. Well, I did just come with my glass of lemonade, to be fair, but then very kindly, oh, 30 seconds before I press go live, my wife brought me a beer, so she's either trying to get me tanked up for something, or she's just been very nice. Um, well, Tony Howells in evening all set to go. Scott's in his line in an old canvas Polish army lavu tent tonight. Are they the ones that is basically just kind of what you put over the top of a um, over the top of a hammock type thing? Is it? Um, I've got no idea to be fair. James Arms in his crack of beer. He's been painting a random Space Marine Terminator. I almost painted a random Space Marine tonight, but I decided not to. And Tony's on the skeletons. They're nice, the ones in um, in Dungeon Saga. Aggression says, even Andy and Co. A giant hate mini stealing hours of his life. Those big minis do tend to do that. You've really got to be in the right mood for them, haven't you? Lee Russ, nice to see you, Lee. Really enjoyed your podcast, mate. I listened to it yesterday, I was, when I, when I went out for my, my daily exercise, went for a walk and listened to your podcast. Really, really interesting, mate. Good to see you still managing to get a little bit of gaming in as well. Trying a bit of online stuff as well, which is cool. Um, Busey's in as well. Hello, Busey. Um, Christian Tinney's daughter's gone home. Nice to see you in then, fella. Kieran's in, even though let's finish his blood, uh, Blitzball team. The cider may gain the way. 
<laughs> making the way Terry's saying bass like the fish. I forget now that I've, I've kind of pressed a few buttons and looked into this stuff. And before it used to be about it was about a 30 or 40 second delay, and now it's about a five or six second delay. So when I ask you something, the answers come up quite fast now. I, I still don't get used to that. Um, Christopher Warden saying, hello. Scott saying, no painting tonight until the little one goes to sleep, but he's been painting all day. Nice. Matt Mountain's in as well. Hello, fella. What's on your paint table tonight, sir? Um, Peter's got five more Mantic Dwarfs. Not sure if they're equipped correctly for Kings of War. Don't worry about it, mate. King, Kings of War is pretty forgiven for that kind of stuff. As long as you just tell your opponent exactly what they are, that's what they are. Don't worry about it. Unless you say they're archers and they're carrying, like, <laughs> like shotguns or something. Although, again, it's still a range, it's still a ranged attack, I suppose. Uh, Lee's painting more clones for tonight. Yeah, I would, on the podcast, mate, you mentioned about how you were doing those with the white primer and the kind of the white contrast paint. They look fantastic. I think those are exactly the kind of minis that you do cut a few corners with because they do look better as an army rather than sort of spending forever doing individual sort of edge highlighting and all that kind of stuff. They look great when they're all ranked there, sort of like up on a table together. Um, David's paint, cleaned his airbrush. Scott's post, post a picture of the group. Thank you, mate. Um, Robert's gone, started painting the Dales RV. Nice one, mate. Look, look forward to see what you do with that. Got Mark in as well. Hello, buddy. Mike G's in as well. It's just those cranes and claw things that came with the orcs. I, I know what you mean. I can't remember what they're called. Is this servo haulers? Is that what they are? We've got BKM BBQ. She says, I want to play some games. I work maintenance at a hospital here in the States, and I haven't had a day off in three weeks. So proud of your new full-time status. Sorry I haven't made the live feed. I'm proud of you, mate, and the work that you're putting in. So don't you worry about missing my live streams, mate. It's nice to see you here for a bit as well. Uh, Matt's got the Kings of War Orgas on. Um, Lee saying, glad I enjoyed the episode. Um, Kieran says, what's the level of rules for Kings of War freebie that service? As far as I know, mate, it's, it's the entire free rules, mate. Probably what isn't in the book is all of the different army lists, I don't think. I've not actually looked at it yet because I've got, I've got a hard copy of the um, Kings of War rule book and I've also got the um, digital version as well. So I've not had a chance to read through to see what's free. But I assume it's just the rules with all of the, like the flavour text, all of the, the lore and stuff taken out because there's loads of lore in that rule book. If, if the rules are something you're interested in, the, I can't recommend the rule book enough, mate. The, the background stories are fantastic. Um, I'll tell you what, let's get let's get the painting anyway. Instead of me sitting chatting here, I'll get nothing done tonight. So what have we got on the table tonight? If he presses the right button, I've got this, which, mean, <clears throat> which means nothing from above. But I thought I'd paint up some of my Infinity Mini. So these ones are Pano or Pano Shiania models. These are the ones that came with the starter set, which was operation ice storm that i'd never got round to painting so i've got a few of them on the table here which are which i'll be kind of working my way through tonight i have primed them i've put a um a cantor blue which is this this dark blue a base coat onto that and then i with an airbrush again i've um i've gone through the airbrush and put this temple guard blue over the top just to kind of lighten them up so i've kind of pre pre-painted the kind of the, the base coat stuff. There's a few more minis here as well. I'll show you the, the, the range of them. Um, I can't pronounce the names half the time, so don't worry about that, but they're really, really nice sculpts. Um, I sh I'm not even sure that these are the kind of the 3D ones, um, the ones that were like 3D rendered. Uh, these might have been the, the last of the old kind of um, hand sculpts as well, but they're absolutely fantastic. Really, really nice detailed minis. So there's those ones, and then you've got these kind of like line troop things as well which are really nice so yeah i've basically put the blue stuff on um so i've put that on and then i'll basically just start kind of picking out the details i'm not going super detailed with these um so yeah we'll see might have to zoom in a little bit but we'll see anyway we'll see um aggression scene there 3d new sculpt I, I know the new ones are made but i'll have these ones for quite some time so I've got a feeling I'm, I've got a feeling these ones might not have been to be fair. Uh, um, where are we are, David's saying need to get a lot of varnish and primer and base coating to do. It's been building up. Peterson's just looking at his bit spin for some shotguns for his dwarfs. Thanks for the tip. Yeah, don't worry about it, mate. As long as they look cool, I think that's pretty much it. Um, Steve's on the Oak Go Riders tonight. Crabby Vision's in as well. Hello, fella. This is Oi Oi. Um, Phil's in his painting more Kairos Fate Weaver. Nice one, fella. Still a bit hungover. <laughs> John Estill says he's painting Nyads. Hello, John, by the way. 
Three rules is everything but only dwarf and orc army list. Ah, I didn't, I haven't seen it yet, mate. So that, that's good. Tim Kelly's in as well. Nice to see you, mate. Jim Zorms in Nice on Infinity. I think I might get into it with Code One. Yeah. So basically, the Code One comes with these, not these particular models, but this particular faction, Panoshiania, and it comes with the Yu Jing faction as well. Um, and there's a list of all of the different models that can be used in Code One that's been released by um, Corvus Belly. And it just so happens everything from that uh, Ice Storm pack, is it Ice Storm? Yeah, it is. Operation Ice Storm pack can all be used. So I thought, why not use these as a bit of a test scheme before the uh, the Operation Cold Storm pack makes an appearance. So, all right, let me get some paints out. Um, let's start with... I think what I'll do is I'll paint a bit of a light, a light grey on the guns, and I might try using the uh, the black contrast paint on the guns and see how that how that goes. Um, so let's try with a Celestra gear, grey, <laughs> Celestra gear. That's because I'm shaking. Excuse me, Celestra grey as a base coat. Um, and everyone's saying yes, they are 3D renders. Thank you for that. They are really sharp, to be fair. So I'm not surprised. But I just, I couldn't put a time. Actually, that Celestra Grey looks really like it's kind of gone off a little bit there. I think what we'll do is we'll just mix up our own grey instead. So let's start with a Dawnstone Grey, I think it is. Yep, Dawnstone. And we'll put a bit of, we'll put a bit of white into it. Um, yes, yeah, Scott's saying that it's free rules. There's only 45 pages of rules and army lists. To be fair, the rules for Kings of War are not actually that many, that many pages of rules. They're, um... They're a pretty straightforward rules list, to be honest. And um, maybe it's not got like magic items and stuff like that in. There'll be in, there'll be enough in there, obviously, to to give it give the game a go to try it out. Um, but yeah, if, if anybody's kind of anybody's on the fence about it, somebody mentioned about Oathmark as well after Monday's video and was saying I should check out Oathmark. So I did check that out today and have a quick look because the rules are not available yet, but uh, as recommended to me on the Osprey Games website. There's a bit of an overview of it, about um, sort of a little bit about the game, what it's about. And where am I looking for? Where the hell's my white gone? There it is. Um, actually, yeah, let's get that. And what I didn't realize was, I, I knew it was a fantasy kind of rank and flank game. What I didn't realize was you had to remove models as they take wounds. And actually, I think I prefer the Kings of War the simplicity of having like a unit and not having to re not having to remove individual uh, models. To be fair, so we'll see. We'll see when it comes out. I also didn't realise it was Joseph McCulloch as well, the Frostgrave guy. I didn't realise it was his game. So interesting stuff, nonetheless. Um, what else we got? Um, Augustine as well. Hello, August. Is hi mate. Very cool models. They're not bad, are they? They're not bad. Um, Alan Salkildon as well. Salkildon, sorry. Nice to see you, mate. A local lad. How are you, fella? He's saying, uh, got roped into movie night with the boys, but I thought I'd drop in. Appreciate that, mate. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Hope you, hope you and the, the family, and especially the, the new arrival, are all doing really well, mate. Um, David Moffat, this is all the infinity I have is from different factions. Um, yeah, I've got some some Yu Jing over there as well. I, I, I the, some of the first models I ever bought. I bought some Nomad models because I really like those, just to paint up, really, just to kind of um, spend a bit of time on. So I've painted up the, the Nomad models a long, long time ago. They were the old sculpts. Um, I've also bought some Yu Jing or Yu Jing, um, just because I like the bikes, you know, like the <laughs> like the motorbikes and the the Akira type thing. Um, so yeah, I bought them just to do. So I've got some Eugene models. I've got some Pano. I've got some Combined Army. I think I've got like just stuff I've bought over the years, just because I like I like the models and I've and I've always wanted to get into the game, but the rules are just they're just quite complex to get started with. They don't the the, the which is what I've struggled with in the past. The, the Operation whatever sets because they're all called Operation something are actually they're, they're excellent, but they're they're solely not a not a start to get playing. They are um, they're far too there's far too big a leap. Let me get on the camera. There's far too big a leap from um, from getting started with those sets to uh, to playing the full 
N2 or N3 rules as they were with those sets. Um, but that's where Code 1 comes in, basically, and is, is going to kind of um, ease that up a little bit. It's going to make it a much easier, a much easier entry point, but also I would say it's also going to be a game in its own right. So if you do decide to kind of pick up Code 1 and you, you find that sort of playing at that, at that level um, is good enough, it scratches your itch, which I think potentially it might actually, it might actually do so uh, for me. Um, then so be it. I think you, you can just kind of stop there, to be fair. Um, where are we at? Hello, Flyam. Did I say hello to you there, Flyam? I, I did see your name, and I thought I'd said hello to you. Um, Peter Nicholas is saying, Kings of War Rules is 45 pages. It, it feels about right, to be fair. There's not, there's not a whole... I mean, when you think the original Kings of War Rules were about eight pages, I think it was. Um... And all they've done over time is just kind of expanded from there, really, just to just to add a bit of flavour and to to um, to expand on some of the explanations and things, really. But the essentially the the base game itself hasn't really changed, which is uh, which is good good news. So, um, Tim saying Oathmark dwarves. Oh, sorry, Mike G. <laughs> Let me get start again. David Moffat. I need to see some undead in Oathmark before I seriously take a look. I know they're coming later on down the line, so I'll wait till then. Yeah, I, I didn't realise um, it was the North, North Star stuff, um, North Star miniatures that are doing the Oathmark uh, range. But obviously you can you can use whatever you like in the game, I suppose. So um, we'll have to see and see what's in, involved in that. Uh, Mike G saying, just cut a piece of paper the size and write what unit is to try the free Kings of War rules. 100% mate, that, that, to be honest, that's what I did the first time, because it's just about base sizes, that's exactly, like you don't need, because you don't need to remove individual models, as we were just talking about for Oath, Oathmark, it is Oathmark isn't it, o yeah, I keep forgetting the Oathsworn, which is the Burrows and Badgers guys, um, because it's that, you, um, it's just the base sizes, that's how I tried it the first time, just to get my head around the basic rules, um, but yeah, it's, Kings of War is a great game. I need I need to get uh, I need to get my army finished to be fair. But the problem is I've run out I've run out of dwarfs, and I haven't had a chance to buy anything this year because I've been trying to save my pennies <laughs> to go full time. Um, so here we are though. I've, I am. Oh, looks like my fr my face camera's frozen. Let me just uh, let me just try and reset that. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll very quickly go back to the main camera. Oh doing that as well I'll tell you what we'll do um i'll just go to it's on a cam link so let's um where are we bear with me folks i'll get it back working in a second i assume you can hear me <laughs> snuck off and left the audio recording uh so i'll deactivate that one and then i think we should be back working now Technology, yeah, brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. And then let's go back to painting. Yeah, we're back running. Thank you for letting me know, <laughs> Luke Breyer. Um, no idea why it's done that. I don't think it's ever done that before, actually. But we're back rocking and rolling now. Um, Tim saying, Oathmark Dwarves are great. Loads of customization and character. Don't play the game, but pick up a box to play elsewhere. I'll have to have a look into them, mate. I've not really actually looked at the miniatures yet. I'll just kind of very briefly have a look on there on their blog to learn a bit more about the game and understand what it was because I'll be honest I, I didn't know a lot about it as I said in the past like fantasy is always been a bit second fiddle to sci-fi for me so I tend not to unless it's one of the unless it's something I kind of already already know about I tend not to uh, I tend not to not pay attention is probably not the right word but it tends not to be on my radar instantly it's only when you good folks recommend them to me um, Christian, this paint handle is absolutely fantastic. The one downside of it is I now feel like I need about four or five of them. So I'm going to, because of your very kind recommendation, I'm going to end up buying some more of these, I think. Uh, in fact, I'm just, yeah, I'll take them off these corks and do it properly because I do like it. It's very comfortable. Um, Lee Rush says, what equipment, brushes, model hole are you using? I'm using Artis Opus uh, brushes, a mixture of Series M and Series S. So some of, some of the ones I've got are the Series M's, 
which have a uh, the miniature have a shorter bristle on them. I do have um, a Winsor & Newton Series 7 as well, which is kind of like a trusty one that I use for certain bits of painting. The handle is the uh, Red Grass Games one. So basically you can kind of hold it on there and you, you kind of use your fingers to, to swivel around. Really, really comfy. I was talking about them on a live stream recently that uh, I was interested in trying them out because they looked really nice. And then Christian very kindly sent me one as a gift. Um, and to be fair, I've not used, I've not used my trusty corks. <laughs> I used these when I was spray priming them, but I've not used my trusty corks since, to be fair. Um, uh, Lucy and Water, uh, hi, hi everyone, how are we? What's that you're painting tonight? It, it is Infinity, mate, yes. So as I said before, these are uh, panel models from uh, Operation Ice Storm, which is an old starter set. But these particular models are usable in the new um, in the new Code One uh, rules, so I'm kind of using these as a bit of a test to get the paint scheme right before Operation Callstrom arrives, and then I can also use these in that game as well. So I'm just. Uh, Trying to concentrate on getting that little tight bit there. Normally I balls it over if I'm talking too much and I'm doing something uh, too intricate. Which is why you'll never see me doing fancy kind of painting and stuff on the stream. The kind of stuff I'll paint on the stream is always the stuff that I'm just, you know, I'm just either painting relatively quickly or cutting a few corners with. And when it comes to cutting a few corners, um, what I would say is cutting corners is never a bad thing if you're just wanting to get stuff done. The amount of us that has a pile of plastic or a pile of metal that just gets out of hand, unless you really are, like you really enjoy painting to a really high standard and that's the part of the hobby that you really enjoy. Actually, let me just hold it up here, that, that's more comfy. Unless that's the part of the hobby that you really enjoy, never ever fear about painting things or never feel bad about painting things fast and cutting a few corners and just a base coat and a wash, all that kind of stuff. And never, like, never kind of compare your stuff to other people's thinking, oh, everybody else paints better than me and stuff. Because you know what it is? Other people might paint better, but they might only paint one model every six months. And other people might paint better, but they might have been painting for 30 years. So only compare your stuff to the standard that, you, that you're happy with. I, I found a, a while ago that I get so much more enjoyment from just finishing things <laughs> than I do from trying to paint to my best ever um my best ever standard so yeah don't don't beat yourself up trying to achieve other people's standards um john francis even oh, let's john francis i was saying we'll go back even all hope everyone's safe and well two words dreadball dreadball well if anybody had seen in the facebook group i've now had my second game of dreadball with my good lady wife. Um, I put the um, the markings onto the bases, because I, as I, I think I mentioned on the Monday Night Live stream, um, the one thing that I did not like about the starter set for Dread Bull was that um, you you couldn't really or couldn't easily tell the, um, the different positions apart from each other. So I painted some red, yellow, and green um, rear arcs on those particular models which helped no end and sped, sped it up a little bit, so we weren't constantly trying to, is that the one with the big shoulders, or is, or is that the one with the spiky shoulder pads, or it was none of that kind of conversation by that point. Um, we start, we played, I think the first time we played, we played with like only five models each, and like three actions, like it tells you in the, in the getting started rules, where you start kind of halfway through a, halfway through a game, uh, and last night we played with the full, um, Whatever it is, is it uh, eight eight models in your in your roster with two kind of subs, six players on the field building your own teams with a full five um, actions. We didn't play with the cards yet because we wanted to kind of get the basics down for that one. But cards will probably come in in our next game, I'd imagine. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a really close game. We were both scoring. Um, the game was swinging backwards and forwards, um, and we took about say probably just over an hour to play maybe a little bit longer but what we were kind of doing was when we're coming to slam or when we're coming to score or kind of like thrown to a to a player and trying to catch it and all that kind of stuff and all the ricochets where if you fumble a ball and that 
we were kind of working it through logically from what we remembered from the rules and then checking it up in the rule book to see if we got it right. Um, so it was, more, it was, it was definitely a, a bit of a training game. But yeah, it, it seemed to seemed to flow quite nicely. I, I enjoyed it, and I won. I won in with a um, with a sudden death, uh, a sudden death game. So we went the full fourteen rushes. It was nil nil. It was obviously well not nil nil, but it was, the score was zero because it had been pulling backwards and forwards. And then um, I uh, I managed to I managed to get a three point strike on my turn. And then when it was my wife's turn. I left it wide open, and I thought I'd lost the game. I left it wide open for it to pick up the ball from from the air, uh, from the launch, to come through and score a four pointer. And uh, when she come through to pick up the ball, a striker fumbled it, and that was the end of her turn. So yeah, I, I won, but uh, it it literally came down in the game to. Uh, I think if she'd picked it up, she could have uh, she could have won the game with a with a four point strike, but. Uh, yeah, it was good fun. Really enjoyed it. Something a bit different. Um, we tend to play kind of quite light board games, really, when we're just playing together. So it was nice to play something with a little bit more tactics. And because we're still learning the game, really, it's uh, quite a bit of kind of conversation between us, really, as well, which is which is what we play for, really, just to be sitting having a bit of bit of banter, a bit of chat. Um, King John was saying, "Did you t get to tell your team at work yet?" Yes, mate, I did. I, I told them. I think it was last week I think it was might have been the week before um, and that was one of the reasons why I'd held off seeing anything on the live stream to be fair um, was because I, I didn't want anybody to find out um, without it being official but um, yeah Tuesday morning work Tuesday morning 9am 9, 9 work sent out the official communication to, to everybody in the business and I've had a few people kind of uh, ring me and text me and stuff to see how things are um, and I'm uh, Obviously, trying not to show my excitement at, uh, <laughs> at, at getting getting to start my own career in uh, in content stuff. So, yeah, it's it's all full steam ahead now. To be fair, everybody knows there's no there's no kind of secrets anymore now about like I've got to keep it to myself or anything. It's all out in the open now. You all know about it. I, I have to say as well, I was absolutely blown away on Monday on the live stream. I, I felt quite quite emotional really if I'm being honest like I don't I don't I don't I'm not really in a, that emotional a person really I don't think but yeah just honestly like just the outpouring of support really was just it was just so nice really like I mean obviously the financial side of things really really helps and stuff and it it keeps uh oh how far oh it's, it looked like the it looked like I'm holding this like kind of flat and I thought it was looked funny it looks completely different on the camera um yeah, the, the kind of just the, the support, because I don't know if you folks know um, Doug from 2 Plus Tough, but he, I think he, he, he's got a lot more subscribers than me, to be fair, and I don't know if he's been going longer or whatever, but he's getting to a point now, I think, where he's, he's considering that this could also be a full-time gig for him as well. He does a lot of um, um, like Age of Sigmar law, um, which, is, which he's absolutely fantastic at, um, and... He started dipping into some Infinity Law as well and Necromunda Law and things, uh, and and he basically was asking asking for support from his um, his viewers and things, and somebody commented on his video basically just um basically I can't remember exactly what the comment was but it was it was about like basically kind of how how dare you ask for money kind of thing, and to be fair and and I read that last week. And I was thinking, oh, do I do I really want to talk about this? Like, you know, you know, it's it's huge news for me, really exciting for me. But do I really want to? Do I really want to open myself up to kind of like people? Because there are some people, like like somebody once commented on on one of my videos, got, said basically, no, not watching your adverts, get a proper job, <laughs> which kind of made me chuckle. But like, you, you, when when you've got a few subscribers, you know, then there's a there's a higher chance. That some of them will will disagree with what you say or what you do, so you basically just gotta be thick skinned, haven't you? So yeah, I did I did think should, should I just not be saying anything, but and I think that was probably why I, like part of the reason I just the support from everybody on Monday was just absolutely unbelievable, and I can I can never thank you enough, really. And you you will get sick of me saying thank you to like saying thank you to you all and thanks for viewing my stuff and thanks for 
sharing my stuff and retweeting my stuff and all that kind of things. But yeah, it was uh, it was very humbling. I think the word is very humbling indeed. So never forget where you come from and who helped you get there. Because yeah, just as you need them on the way up, you might also need them on the way down again as well. Um. Where are we at? Mark's in there. You are. Yeah, I've got to back. What equipment? We've just chatted about that one. George's in. Just pop in to see a high corn hangout. It's playing Camel Up. Camel Up is an awesome game, mate. Enjoy it. Um, let's just jump off my screen there. Scott's in. He's ordered the last one from the Element Games using the affiliate link. Um, oh, the last the last handle, mate. Is that what you've bought? Nice one, fella. Um, yeah, I might have to. I might have to treat myself or maybe. maybe Maybe now I'm using them. Maybe I even reach out to Redgrass and say, see if they want a sponsor. Um, uh, Matt says he's got five of them as well. Loves the Artus Opus brushes too. I've not tried the Redgrass brushes, mate. I know, I know you, you've used some of them in the past as well, haven't you? So um, I've just since I got these Artus Opus ones, I've never, I've never tried anything else because I've been quite happy with them. They're not the cheapest of brushes, but they seem to be, um, they seem to be doing the job for me. To be fair. Uh, and I'm not a great painter, so so it's they're not making me any worse, that's for sure. Um, right, I think what we'll do is that same grey I'm going to paint on this cloak as well, where I've got a bit of overspray off the, um, the airbrush. Let me get that comfy there. Um, we've got Marco in. Hello, Marco. How are you doing? Christian, saying, glad you like the handle. Oh, honestly, mate, I, I really appreciate it. It's the kind of thing that I keep meaning to get around to kind of to trying out, but... You know, when I've been busy doing things and I've been trying to save a few quid here and there, I just kind of I forget about them. It's and and what I like, you just it's always on the air. Uh, oh yeah, the I always call it the why I pile because it means um oh like why why I is a very jolly term like like as a, as why I means yeah whatever like oh yeah of course I'll eventually get around to that like like why I'll get one. So I I kind of call these things the why I pile. Uh, because it's all the things that I keep seeing I'll get round to, but never really seem to. Um, what else we got here? Mark was doing a bit of paint of his Walking Dead stuff. Um, nice, mate. Is Walking Dead something new to you, mate? Have you have you had stuff for a little while? Have you? Is it just me as well, folks? Or do I feel like Walking Dead's getting a bit of a second wind at the minute? I'm hearing a lot about it. Like it's it's always been like part of my gaming and stuff, if you like. So. I remember people kind of complaining a little while ago about, oh, there's not been anything new in a while, but it just feels at the minute like it's getting a bit of a, a bit of a renaissance, and it's like I'll always sing its praises. I love the game. It's, it's like not so much as a competitive game, um, it's more as a very like a very just casual kind of um, narrative game, um, and certainly a, a brilliant one for new players. But it just feels like I don't know whether it's just like am I in some kind of like echo chamber at the minute? around the blackjack groups and stuff that where I'm seeing lots of it. But yeah, it definitely feels like it's I don't know whether Wave Sevens just giving it a bit of a bit of a boost. Uh Lucian only ever gave it infinity a cursory glance until they released the werewolf type ones. Yeah, they're from the Ariadna, I think it is. Um it says in my wallet has been kicking me in the thigh ever since I've resisted so far. The the law for uh, infinity is absolutely brilliant and I, I honestly i urge anybody that doesn't know much about infinity check out two uh dugger two plus tough so two plus tough is his uh, his channel he's been doing some kind of introductory law um videos they're great to have one in the background while you're sitting painting um introductory law videos which basically explain the the background to the infinity where where the world comes from and stuff um and essentially they're basically like in a really, really quick uh, example. So what happens is that it's like set in the, in the far future. Um, the, the basically, the, there's like, there's these wormholes open up. And the, um, like obviously, American government and, and their allies, basically there's a bit of a space race on to create these ships to fly through uh, these wormholes to explore them. And essentially what happens is the Americans, um, plow all of their money into it, send these ships through and these ships disappear 
in the wormhole and they pretty much almost like bankrupt their economy on, on trying to trying to chase this. So what happens is China as a bit of a superpower starts to pull together with countries like Japan and its um its surrounding kind of countries and starts to basically become like the world superpower trying to take over the entire world. And then you get um, but then what happens is obviously a lot of those countries don't want to be Chinese. You know, they, they still want their own identity. So they, um, they come up with the name Yujing, which is essentially the kind of like the amalgamation of all those uh, Asian countries. And then while this is happening, you also get um, Australia, who are really worried about getting swallowed up by, by Yujing as well, being relatively close. So they decide to set up their own kind of coalition with countries like India, with countries like Chile and Brazil, um, and, and countries like that, that dotted around. So they set up their own um, kind of amalgamation, which is Pan Oceania, which of these are the models for. And, um, and they, bec they become sort of super powerful, really. Um, and then into the future, they kind of they develop this, the space race again to go out into the stars. And what happens is they, they come across this planet where one of the missing ships that was sent up by the Americans years ago is, is living. And one of those ships is called the Ariadna. Um, and so that those people are called Ariadna. And then sort of there's this whole, so there's this race out there in the stars. And then, then they start creating kind of um, artificial intelligence to try and govern things. So you get things like ALF or ALF, I think it is, is basically like this artificial intelligence. Um, then there's kind of like, a, like almost like a like a European like a, like a world superpower which is trying to control things and that's the O12 and a little bit like kind of um, a bit like the G8 type thing you know like how the, this kind of global summit type things the O12 is this kind of sort of force trying to keep balance and stuff honestly it's it it's it's as deep um, as as kind of like 40k and that kind of stuff but it just doesn't get the doesn't get the the love. But it's not it's not set in this kind of grim future really. It like it's quite a colourful kind of like like the battles are taking place in like sort of towns and cities and things, really. They're not they're not just kind of like um, obscure planets where it's been destroyed by years of like apocalypse, if you like. Um the battles tend to be taken uh, between kind of small um crack teams. Um so one of the things is basically in the future, countries have developed like things like um um, like holograms and and like um, bionic implants and things, all a lot of, like a lot of tech. So when they when they get out to space and they find the Ariadne, uh, they're essentially they're just carrying on like almost using old Earth sort of tech. They haven't developed anything further. So whilst they might not have the latest kind of weapons and guns, they're they're immune to being hacked. Uh, all of their technology and stuff. So it's brilliant the way they've built all of that stuff. Um. David says, Star Breach has a new solo court module out. Uh, it has you play a team of four hunters versus eight legion of man humans and four coven empire. Uh, Tau, de definitely an easy way to get a taste of the game. I'll, I'll have to check into that, mate, then. I've, got, I've, got, I've been sent the Star Breach rules, actually, so I'll need to do a bit of, uh, a bit of digging into that. Lee saying, my mantra for model painting, what's the quickest way I can cheat my way to finishing this? It never used to be my mate, but it 100% is now these days. It definitely is these days. Um, I that's exactly how I painted my Star Wars stuff. Basically, um, base colors, base browns and stuff on my on my troopers, um, on like my kind of my rebel troopers. Base browns, wash over the top, just pick out a highlight kind of thing. That was pretty much it, really. Um, Thor limbs in as well. It says all our black jacarinos. I like that one, made black jacarinos. Um, David Moffat says a team of four Infinity miniatures could work for hunters. Oh well. There you go, mate. We might have some. We might even have four finished painted by the end of the night. Um, let's use which one should we use for this? I think I'll use this brush. Um, Kieran saying, always compare the last model you did. No point getting stressed looking at others. Definitely, mate. Luke saying, tail top standards the way to go. I went for years putting too much effort and wasting time on small details. You can't see when the game's in flow. I I used to spend a lot of time trying to paint to the best of my ability, and and I'm. In my time, I've been a decent painter, really. Not not brilliant, but like kind of good enough, if you like, like good enough to good enough for people to go like, wow, like how did you do that? That's really good, kind of thing. 
Um, but I just never got anything finished. I never, I never managed to kind of like ever really complete anything. I certainly wouldn't have been painting full armies. And it was one of the reasons I used to play a lot of kind of skirmish games like Malifaux and things was because essentially I was, you know, I, even, even though it still took me a long time, um, I, I could kind of paint up six models for Malifaux or something like that. But it would take, it would take me months. Like it, it wouldn't be kind of six models wouldn't be done in a few days kind of thing the way I, I probably do these days. And even then I used to sign up for tournaments to try and kind of motivate me to to finish them really not because i was competitive just because i need i needed like a self-imposed deadline really um just just to get things finished but yeah more recently i i've i've kind of learned some shortcuts that for my models now my my kind of style if you like is pretty much basic basic um base coats probably a wash over the top um pick out the highlights but pick out the highlights by kind of pushing the contrast going quite a bit quite a bit brighter if you like um and because the miniatures are relatively small it just helps them stand out on the tabletop really and and, and from a distance people go like oh wow that looks that looks good when you get up close you can see all the kind of like little mistakes and bits i've painted like slips and stuff but as a combined force if you like like my kings of war dwarves are a prime example of that really um they look decent I'm happy with them, but they're certainly not a uh, they're certainly not pro painted if you like. That's for sure. Um, where are we at? Um, Kieran Byrne, yes, we're talking about Luke's team, but tabletop standard. Stacey and Dreadball, such a great game. Honestly, mate, I, I can I can see me in uh, Mrs. Blackjack. Um, getting getting quite into it, mate. I've already been kind of like looking at like other teams and things like that as well to see if there's anything that takes her fancy. And I said if she picks one, I'll paint I'll paint one up for her. So yeah, who knows, mate? Much sure we'll see us at tournaments together, like. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's it it feels like a nice balance between the kind of the war game and stuff that I enjoy doing, and the board game and stuff that she enjoys doing. And I think that's that's exactly what we need really to to try and get that. Uh, to to strike that balance really, and then we're all we're all getting something out of it that we want. Um, horror person saying I agree. I don't paint any higher than a tabletop standard either. Gene, your stuff is pretty damn good though, mate. I mean, I, you you have a really good tabletop standard. I would say. I mean, you might call it tabletop, but to me, even that's probably a step on from where I would. But potentially that just comes with. Uh, with uh, with experience and you do paint a lot, so you probably just got good at, at painting fast. Um, <laughs> Peter's loving the term black and checkerinos. Yeah, I like that, mate. I like that as well. Um, Deep red, hello, fella. How are you doing? Healing well, met legacy is. I like legacy is as well. Um, William Jones saying to Luke, yeah, completely agree. Don't paint well as I used to. I'm unsatisfied with everything I do. Have to keep reminding myself these are gaming pieces. I think, do you know what, it, it's because when we look online, we see some absolutely fantastic, really, really well painted stuff, like, you know, obviously Games Workshop, um, they're going to show their miniatures off to the best of their ability to get people talking about them, even people like Mantic are using, um, uh, like, Angel Heraldes and stuff now for their painting, and and it really does show the miniatures off to the, to the best, and I think it's very, very easy to get a little bit kind of, like, down in the dumps and go oh, I'm never going to be able to paint it that good or whatever it is but let's be fair they get thrown around on the tabletop a bit like you'd hate to have spent like six months painting one model for somebody to knock it off the table at a tournament or something like that so we, we, we do have to kind of we do have to remember what they're for if they paint if you're painting them to display them because that's what you're into then by all means take all the time in the world if you get your enjoyment from painting to a really high standard, then don't let me talk you out of it kind of thing. But everybody else, especially people just starting, because it's, it's new people to the hobby half the time that get like a little bit, a bit kind of like, oh God, like look what everybody's doing. I dare to show my stuff off. If like, if, you, if you're at a level that, you, that you're kind of happy with, I mean, I'm just putting contrast paint on these guns. I'm not, I'm not knocking any kind of golden demon winning stuff out of this, that's for sure. 
Um, where were we? Flying Mammals cleaning up the Hero Quest minis. Nice one. Nice to see you getting some uh, Hero Quest love going there, Ruth. All right, I expect pictures once you've uh, once you've done that. To be fair, um, I think I've already said that. Haven't I? Um, Tony saying cutting corners, hundred percent with you. My dungeon saga stuff is pure contrast speed. To be honest, I, I've been quite. Uh, I've been thinking about trying to paint some stuff with a hundred percent contrast just to see what kind of level it goes. And the only reason I haven't is I just I haven't I haven't bought into contrast paints really. I haven't got enough of the colours to really uh, to really give it my best shot and to see what kind of effect it'll give. I've essentially got like skin tones and skeleton horde and like sort of blacks and greys and stuff really the stuff that were just kind of shortcuts so we'll give it a try at some point though we'll give it a try um where are we at fit saying yeah legacy is as cool uh tony says my son oh i just flew off the top of my screen there when i try to scroll down wow the chat wow the chat's lively tonight he says, my son reckons your job title should be videologist. Oh, I like that, mate. It makes me think of like um, like mixologists, you know, like, like um, the, uh, what they call the co like cocktail people. Makes me think of that. I'm happy with that, mate. Mi videologist. Doesn't make me think of like a meteorologist, which would be more scientific and much, much more intelligent. But yeah, it makes me think of cocktail makers. <laughs> um... Richard saying, evening lads, he's just got the iron golems built. Uh, nice one, mate. Need to decide where to prime them in sub-assemblies. Sub-assemblies? Um, sub-assemblies? I, I only tend to do sub-assemblies when the model's big. Or if there's like a shield covering the, like the, across the chest and things like that. Otherwise, I tend not to worry about it. I think I've got one of those kind of feelings where if my brush can't get to it, my eye's not going to see it. That kind of thing, so... I tend to uh, I tend to take the take the simple route, take the easy route out. Um, Christian sharing the link there for Patreon. Thank you very much. Like I say, I was blown away the other night when everybody was um, sharing from the uh, everybody was kind of joining the Patreon and things. Um, we we jumped like over ten percent more in uh, in support as well, and, and with some some quite high level support as well. So it's really kind of like obviously going out i was obviously going to quit my day job um and do this full time but I, there's always at the back of your mind that's thinking you know you're, you're taking a huge risk is it is it is it even though i really want to do it is it the right thing to do and then i guess like the stars aligned and um that that kind of that decision was taken out of my hands really um and getting made redundant was just that kind of like it was a confirmation of well you ain't got a choice now. Give, like, like this, this is what you wanted, kind of thing. Get ahead and do it. But then when you get people like the the, the really really nice comments the other night and the, and obviously the the financial support as well. It's just it's it's humbling and, and and it just confirms that I'm definitely doing the right thing. And like I said on Monday, what's the worst that happens? I can always say that I gave it a hundred percent and I tried. So, um, but I I fully intend for it to work. I just need to kind of make sure that I always always deliver on my promises, really. If I tell you I'm going to bring you some content that you're going to enjoy, I need to bring you some content you're going to enjoy. So, but yeah, exciting. Like I said before, it's uh, it's not every day you get to kind of to give your dream a shot. So, awesome news. Um, Terry said, I noticed you mix your paint with a large brush and then paint with an appropriate size. I've always used the same brush. Uh, as I'm painting and the the paint heads into the ferrule, I'm a dirt. That, that's exactly why I do it. With. I've got kind of like an old brush that I use for like scooping up the paint out of the pot and stuff and putting it onto a wet palette or whatever. Um, and then I'm just using the kind of the tips of the brush really to, to paint with. I never used to. I never used to, to be fair. I used to gunk them all up as well. But since I got some more expensive brushes <laughs> and, I, and I start looking after them with brush soap and stuff, yeah, I stopped doing that. Gene said everyone picks a, a balance to achieve their own standard. Uh, because I paint for skirmish games, I can put a bit more time in individual models. Yeah, I, I think the problem is, I, I think sometimes people don't don't adjust. I think they always try and um, to paint the, to the same standard regardless. The amount of people I've seen kind of give up on a, on a Kings of War army or, or give up on a 40k army because basically they paint a test model 
and it takes them like weeks and they go, right, I'm, that's what I'm going to do, that's what I'm going to paint. You're never going to get a full army like, to, to that kind of standard. Uh, the Crimson Painter is in as well. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Claudio saying, get a proper job. You hear that a lot in Germany. I hate it with all my heart. Such a stupid sentence. It will be definitely, uh, it will be defined by our income. Yeah, unfortunately, mate, they're at, like, even like to my kids now, my kids are 18 this year and they're at college. And there's still that mentality of like, you've, you've basically, you've got to leave college, you've got to go and get a proper nine to five job. You've got to um, uh, basically like just get on board with working for the man, as they say, kind of thing. Like it's, there's just this assumption that like there is only one way to kind of live your life and and that everybody should just try and work as you, work as hard as you can and earn as much money as you can. But um, it's took me a long time to get my head around that and it's, it's not true. There's lots of different ways to kind of to earn a living. But the, but the best way to earn a living is doing something that you love. And that's what I'm trying to instill into my kids really is that it doesn't really matter. As, as, long, as, you, as long as you've got enough to kind of to survive, if you like, you know, you don't, you don't want to be working for a five or a week. As long as you've got the money to, um, to kind of pay your bills and feed yourself and clothe yourself, like happiness is not linked to the amount of money you earn. But I think like it's, we just we 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 live in a society that's full of um, marketing and consumerism, and we're expected to to kind of live up to other people's standards sometimes. And it's took me forty five years of my life to get to a point where I've just suddenly thought, you know, as, as long as me and my family are happy, I don't really care what anybody else thinks. So yeah, what I would say is that my thoughts to to my older children. Do not echo the, echo the thoughts of my ex-wife <laughs> to my older children. She thinks very differently. So, yeah, the, you can imagine that clashes from time to time. Um, where are we at? Gene saying, I never get sick of gratitude, Andy. It's the people who take help for granted I want to choke. I tell you what, uh, I, never t I, never, I never take kind of people's support for granted. Um, I think I was saying it on Monday as well. That, you know, I didn't, I didn't exactly come from... from uh, a wealthy family or anything like that. I've not. It's not like I've kind of like had money my, my whole life or anything like that. I've certainly had, I've had money when I've been working hard and I've had a good job and I've had nice things and and I've had nothing like basically like um had nothing at all and it took me a long time to realise that my my happiness <laughs> was not linked to either of those things really. Um. So yeah, it's don't get me wrong. I, I'm I'm massively fortunate like to be getting this shot. It's like my wife's done some big, um, she's sacrificed, like done some big sacrifices to help me to make it work. And, and all every single one of you lot who watch my stuff and share my stuff and help my Patreon and all that kind of stuff, you've all helped me as well. So yeah, I, I'll, I, do, not, I do not take it lightly and, and, I, and I know exactly how I've got to where I've got to. So, um, where are we at? King Johnson, didn't you say you used to play DAOC back in the day, Dark Age of Camelot? Not me, mate. I've, I've never heard of that in my life. Um, somebody must have said it, I assume, on one of the streams. But uh, no, it's not, it's not a game I've actually even heard of, mate. Um, which is saying, hey, Zach. Um, where? Gene saying, new wave is coming out, so plenty to be excited about. I, I think we're talking about uh, Walking Dead, then we are obviously well behind the chat on that. Oh my God, I'm like 20 minutes behind. I will play catch up, honestly. It's because I'm, because I'm actually painting as well. I'm concentrating on what I'm doing. Um, I'll skip ahead in a second and, and play catch up a little bit. Um, I'm also trying to work out what, what should be what colours. It's the only, the only problem I get is when, when I do these kind of like pre shaded base coats with an airbrush. Everything basically gets coated the, almost the same, and I kind of forget what I what I should be painting and what colours. I've actually got some kind of pictures up in front of me just to kind of give me a little bit of a little bit of ideas, really, just to break it up a little bit. Let's say uh, I think we'll do these bits silver as well. Oh, it'll help if I put them on camera for you. Um, oh, Mark was he had the collector's edition plus a few expansions for some time, and he's using the lockdown to paint them up. And he's also played his first games as well with his son. Awesome, mate. James has ordered here's Negan with all the talk of Walking Dead on the Patreon group. I think I think that's why it's kind of like that's why I feel like it's getting a bit of a um, 
it's getting a bit of a resurgence at the minute, and I, I don't, I don't know exactly why, but it seems to be. Um, Scott said, "You think Walking Dead's taken off more with it being a solo game? Quite possibly, mate. Actually, Busey saying it gets confused the names, but worked it out now. Hi, Rick and Smith. Um, <laughs> probably Vision Walking Dead's on his YI pile as well. Matt saying red grass bushes are okay, but only come in two sizes, two and two. Uh, yeah. Um, and he said they were very generous with their products. They sent me loads of stuff when I was doing the painting videos. It's worth asking." I wasn't sure, mate, if you'd got them through like Mantic and stuff. To be fair, I wasn't sure because I know they they do quite a lot of stuff for Mantic. I might I might get in touch and see uh, see what they say. Um, Robert Zung saying playing Walking Dead more because of the uh, No Man Stands Alone, the AI rules for enemy groups. I've not actually seen them yet, mate. Um, to to kind of look over those rules. So I'll have to I'll have to check them out. Uh. Um, something just pinged there. Busey, you don't, you don't need to be donating, mate. Honestly, there is absolutely no need to be doing that. Honestly, thank you so much, though. Massively appreciated, obviously. But, uh, oh, you just want to get your name on the screen, is that what it is? <laughs> um, thanks, buddy. I hope you're yeah, keeping well, mate, as well. Um, where are we at? <laughs> Everybody's talking about story time with Andy. This is what happens when I'm painting. I almost kind of zone out, and, and I, obviously, I'm, I know I'm talking to you a lot, but it's almost a case of like um, I just get into the zone. I saw I start just talking away and get into my painting. I'm kind of relaxed. I'm chilled. I mean, I, I guess you lot know, uh, or you, I guess you see that how I am on a Monday when I'm just focused on the camera and I'm focused on the chat. I'm probably a bit more energetic than when I'm sitting painting. I'm kind of, it's a bit more relaxed. It's a bit more laid back because I'm just kind of like dotting around doing bits and pieces. Um, so I hope it's, I hope it's still kind of fun for you to tune into. If we, like, how many folks have come in tonight? It's, we've got 79 people in tonight. Holy crap. <laughs> I better up my game. <laughs> I was expecting about 10. It's gone up to 80 now since I said that. Um, I better up my game a little bit. I, was, I wasn't expecting anywhere near that kind of number. So thank you to every single one of you that, that's come in this evening. Um, yeah, yeah, what do I say to that? It's just deciding. I think what I'm doing, folks, I'm uh, let me just, I'll, I'll pick up. A, so what I'm doing is I'm just trying to pick out the bits of silver and stuff on here and trying to understand which bits I want to kind of just pick out a little bit, just to highlight some bits, really, just to... Uh, Give it a little bit of something because I think what I'll essentially do is I'll probably put a really, really watered down black wash to kind of pick out or even just use it to kind of pick up the pin lining um, just to really give it a little bit of delineation, if you like, um, and then maybe try and highlight the, highlight the blue up a little bit. But I'm, I'm not going overboard on these. Like, like we said before, basically, they're, they're plain pieces um, first and foremost, and that's, that's exactly what I want to use them for. So... I'm just kind of picking off little bits, really, just to, just to give it a little bit of pop, really, give it a little bit of something. Um, he says going quiet there as he focuses on painting a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, I think that'll do for that one at the night. We'll move on to another. Um, Scott's not a sci-fi person, but Infinity does sound interesting. I probably have not done it justice, to be fair, but if you thought, if you thought the butchering of a job that I just did with it, um, sounded interesting. Um, definitely, definitely head over and uh, and check out. Oh, my phone's going nuts over there. Uh, definitely head out and uh, check out um, Doug from Two Plus Tough. He uh, he tells a better story than I do. That's for sure. Uh, he's a really nice guy too. Um, all right, right. I'm going to start skipping ahead a little bit as well, just to try and catch up with some of your stuff. Um, Hellboy painting. You have them on the blackjack pages. Um, what was that one? Oh, Alan's planning, planning to try some solo Hellboy. So you want to get the miniatures painted up or yours painted. I've painted the Hellboy. I did the, I, I painted my Hellboy up last um, painting stream. Um, and since then, I've painted that entire tray of all of the frog monsters and stuff. And I'm just working my way through it now, tray by tray. Um, Aggression City plays Infinity. Always thought low model count would make it easier to collect and play. Yes, how wrong. Flying Mammals didn't spend a lot of time on Malifaux models. They're so nice, you can't just base coat. Yeah, I agree, actually. Um, Craig saying he almost... Hello, Craig, by the way. Almost always paint his minis in a different colour scheme to the studio jobs. 
that way they're unique to me and I'm not comparing them. That's another way to kind of do that as well. I tend to paint them studio colors sometimes or, or base them on them studio colors purely because it just, it takes the pressure off me coming up with my own schemes sometimes. Um, and it just means that I can, I can concentrate on just getting it done rather than getting the, getting the colors wrong or, or worrying about. Um, I'm just looking now, trying to see how this one stands out. Um, rather than worrying about it really, worrying about what I'm actually doing. Um, I think we'll paint the pants on there a different color. Um, yeah, just rambling to myself now, folks. Um, Tony sent the Fly Marmel Malifaux is the one I really want to pick up a few minis for. Yeah, I, I love the Malifaux minis as well. I think that, that will make an appearance at some point in the future. Scott's painting 12 walkers a day, 3D printing as well. I'll just chuck completely jumped off the top of my chat um oh my god you lot are, you lot are chatty tonight which is good though to be fair deep red city consider yourself a lazy speed painter don't worry about that mate Burfuck bears in as well says uh congrats look forward to seeing the channel grow yeah the i think as i said on monday to be fair like i think it'll grow just sort of organically because I'm doing more stuff, but um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just happy to be doing what I love, to be honest. I need, like, in order to make it like a viable thing long term, I obviously need to earn a little bit more cash. But uh, and that's what that's what and that's what I think will happen as I get more time to do stuff, which I've not really had in the past. So I think I think I'll get to that point. But I'm not totally like I'm not looking for hundreds of like. 100,000 subscribers or anything like that. I'm quite happy to, to keep things relatively small and keep a, a nice kind of tight-knit community and stuff. I think that's more important to me, I think, at this stage. That's the bit I enjoy as well. And that's what I think what I was saying the other night. I don't really consider myself a, a YouTuber, really. I'm not, I'm not just making videos to, to generate loads of views. I'm really um, making videos for a community and then hoping that that's good enough to get the community to support me, really, which is, which is what's happening. So I've got a very different kind of, very different business model, if you like, to, to most people. Most people are trying to grow their channel as big as they can, make loads of ad revenue, sponsored videos, all that kind of stuff. I'm just trying something completely against the grain, really, and see how that, see how that pans out. Um, Steve says, that's the reason I love Dreadball myself, and contrast paints are great for Dreadball. Teams can easily knock out a team in an even. Yeah, I think that's probably what, I, what I'll probably have to try and do, mate. Right, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Um, John saying there, let's set an appropriately achievable standard for you guys joining the Kings of War. It not, it, it's not that I'm rubbish at painting. Um, to be honest, mate, that's you say that you say that kind of like in a bit of a joking way, but it, but it's actually quite serious. It's like because there's nothing worse than being put off when you're first starting out. Like the last thing you want to do is to you know you. You come into a new game and you think, oh my God, like this is the standard I've got to try and achieve. I'm never going to be able to paint like that. So it, you're right, mate. It's uh, sometimes just, I mean, it's nice to have a, a really nice painted army. Don't get me wrong. It's, and it's nice. If you've got the time, like, so if you're playing Kings of War, for example, and you've been playing for ages and you've got an army that you use all the time and you've got another army that you're painting like just nice and slowly in the background, maybe spending a bit more time on it, trying to get it up to scratch. To, or get it up to like a, a different level rather I should say there's nothing at all wrong with that like it's just I'd, ra I'd rather see a painted army on the table than a, than a, um, a fantastically painted unit and, and piles and piles of grey um, Animus Oculus is in good evening mate so he's trying to finish 10 simmerings but tend to end up the, but tend to up but I tend to up the level of the tabletop quality it's, I think it's one of the things, if you can paint to a tabletop standard, you can always go back and up the quality later, can't you, as well? Uh, Mike G's saying, right, nobody's going to pick up your mini when you're playing and inspect your colour blending. They're happy there's paint on them. You are right, mate. I think, because um, people would, people do prefer to play against, like, nice, or, or painted armies, I should say, because part of what we do is, is about the aesthetic of it and stuff, and, we, you know, you want to feel kind of immersed in it and stuff. Um, and actually just having like grey plastic on the table whilst it's totally acceptable and you should it's your hobby you should never feel like you have to paint your stuff if that's not what you're into 
Um, like having some color on the table is infinitely better uh, for me personally. However, my little lad, me and my little lad were sitting painting the other day. He wanted to try and paint some of, some of my models. So I, I dug some out of the garage and let him sit and paint some with me. And he just painted like a block color red on a Chaos Space Marine and block like block color green on, a, um, on an oak. And actually when I looked at them, I thought, do you know what it is? Even just painting them one color, like, and I'm sure if you put a wash over them or something like that as well, um, even just painting them that one color made a huge difference. It, ju it just instantly kind of gave a little bit of character and a bit of life to the miniatures. So it's like, even if like, even if all you do is kind of base coat and wash them really, like even if it's one color, it, it just infinitely looks better than, uh, than nothing at all. So yeah, it's just, just a, just a thought. Just a thought. Um, we've got Nixon as well, saying the person who's going to complain the most about your paint job is yourself. Tends to be the thing. Alan says, Andy, would you give my boys Lucas, Callum and Dylan a shout? Hello, Lucas. Hello, Callum. Hello, Dylan. How are you doing? Um, he says, they want to do a YouTube channel. They'll all enjoy playing Warhammer and going to help me build the war cry scenery. Well, boys, um, Go for it. That's all I would say. There is nothing, nothing stopping you trying to get a YouTube channel. If you're, if you, if your dad's got a phone with a camera on it, you're all set. That's all you need. You can get started. I don't know how old you are. <laughs> you, can, you could be twenty year old for all I know. You might have your own cameras. Um, but yeah, it's um, just, just dive in. Give it a go. There's, there, don't let anybody stop you doing it. There's nothing stopping you. Um, yeah, dive in and get it done. Everybody's got to start somewhere. I started with my first videos. Um, with a, I think I had a GoPro that I used to take on holiday with me. That was what I did my first ever videos on. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you see on 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 my channel, I did a, like a studio tour thing the other day where I kind of like went around and showed everybody what the stuff I've got in here and where I film my videos. And that whole video was just done on my phone, um, just because that way I could show my camera and stuff, like show what I was using on my camera. But yeah, it, and it looks just as good. So. Yeah, just dive in, do it, and don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Do it because you enjoy it. Don't let anybody tell you you're doing it wrong. Um, Deep Red says, the fuck how many people are watching some chap slap paint on a toy right now is all credit to you. Yeah, do you know what it is, mate? Um, I will never, ever get used to the fact. I mean, I, I, I keep painting off camera. To be fair, <laughs> I'm, I'm no pro at this. I am actually just, I am literally sitting hobbying. I'm not doing like, I'm not doing a painting tutorial. I'm not trying to show like how to do this professionally. I'm not showing you any fancy kind of um, blending methods and all this kind of stuff. I am literally just sitting <laughs> painting my miniatures and switching my camera on. And it blows me away that you folks want to come and hang out and paint your minis keep me company and, and support me and what I'm doing. So as I said before, I will never, never, ever forget the, um, the support that you lot give me. Um, family of Gamers is in as well. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Says, I'm upset we didn't get a chance to meet and hang out. I am absolutely gutted, mate, that uh, Adepticon was canned. Obviously, it's um, at the time, I must admit, I was thinking, oh, I can't believe it's cancelled. Like, is it really that bad? You know, all this kind of stuff. We're a few more weeks down the line now, and it's obviously hugely important uh, that we all stay at home and uh, and don't pass this uh, this virus around. But I must admit, my uh, my opinion on the whole thing has definitely shifted, kind of as time's gone on. I was definitely in the camp of it. It might not be that sort of that bad. Like it's, you know, um, maybe we'll still get maybe we'll still get to go to uh, to Adepticon, all that kind of stuff. Where now it's like. I've got a holiday booked for June, and I'm now I'm like, oh god, even if, even if the can, even if the lockdown's cancelled, I'm not really sure. Like if if it's if it's all open again and we can go, I'm not even sure. I want to I want to go. I, I don't know if I feel like I want to go on holiday and uh, kind of like travel. So it's interesting how times change. But yeah, no doubt, me. I, I I hope that we uh, we get the chance to cross paths next year at Adepticon instead. I like I said, I managed to get uh, get a refund on my on my on my flight tickets, so that money's been put to one side to kind of pay for next year's trip. So, and now now this is my job. Now I'm doing this full time. 
might even be able to get some kind of tax tax write off, put it down as business expenses now. So who knows? So um, Beyond Hopes in as well. Nice to see you. Um, Claudio says VIP in the chat. Coach is here. That's it now, man. All all the big guns are in. Um, anyway, everybody's VIP in this chat. That's how it works. Um, aggression <laughs> saying Henry Hill. Uh, King John says, any thoughts? Um, any thoughts on getting a three D printer? Yes, mate. I have considered. Christian's been the one that's been um, sort of tempting me to to look into it. The stuff he's been printing. Um, with these, uh, his resin printer has definitely kind of tempted me to, to take a look at it. Um, the only thing stopping me at the minute is um, <laughs> one, paying for it, um, and two, just the fact that in the current climate and stuff, I think it's it's quite difficult to get a hold of um, some of the the ISO stuff, the ISO is it ISO propanol, is it, the, the alcohol stuff. For, for cleaning the, the minis up and stuff because it's, it's a big proponent in uh, hand sanitizer so it's actually quite difficult to get that at the minute so but um who knows mate who knows I'll, i might i might well give it a shot at some point um where are we at um Terry says, I am on the monthly Patreon, you are, sir, and it is hugely appreciated. How do I contribute to individual nights like Mondays or tonight? Uh, first of all, thank you for, for even asking. I really appreciate that. There's a couple of ways you can do it. One is you can you can pledge to the Patreon as well, just as a one-off donation. You can like you can you can increase your pledge for one month, or you can um you can like do a separate pledge from a different email account or whatever it is, just as a one-off. You do, and, and that goes for anybody. To be fair, if you want to, if you just want to join the Patreon for one month. So, for example, you if you pledge at the two dollar pledge level, you get access to the Discord chat. So, if you just want to do it for one month and see what the fuss is about. Two dollars gets you access to that. I do a monthly podcast, which is um, free for anyone at five dollars and above. So, if you want to kind of join the Discord and you want to hear this month's podcast, um. You can jump in at five dollars as a one-off donation kind of thing, and then just not renew it next month. So there's what's one way to do it. The other way to do it is how um, Busey did it earlier on. You'll see it says um, most recent super chatter at the bottom of your chat. There should be like a um, like a dollar sign in a square um, next to the smiley face where you do your emoticons. If you click on that, you can donate to me through. Um, it's basically through YouTube, and then they basically um, they they pay that into my account with. Um, they take their little cut from it, obviously, but um, they pay uh, that in with like my ad revenue on a monthly basis. So that's a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, if you do it, it either way, your name will ping up on the screen because, like, as you can see there, so like, um, we, well, like Tony Howell, just like that. Thank you, Tony, as if to explain it. Uh, that's how, uh, <laughs> thank you very much, by the way. That's how it'll be, and you'll come up as the most recent super chatter. And down the right hand side, it always shows the, the last three people as well. So, yeah, that's another way to do it as well. Thank you, mate, for, for even asking about it. Um, where are we at? Talk a bit of chat there about Henry Cavill. We've got Snorky uh, Mescaline. Says, hi, ho. It's a fig from Infinity. It is. Would, would like to see some Infinity Code 1 that's going out at the end of the month. My two armies are on the way. You will see Infinity on this channel, mate. I'm uh, really, really looking forward to... Uh, to code one i'm massively looking forward to giving that a go I, I mentioned at the start of the chat basically i um i've always fancied infinity but the leap from these like operation cold front boxes to full like n2 n3 rules has been quite a big leap for me and, and i feel like full scale infinity has so many layers of rules uh, sorry so many layers of they're not even rules really they're just like flavor really to the game options there's so many layers to that that it's actually quite it's it's quite a full time game. It's like what I would call a lifestyle game, where you have to d devote your game into it. I think Code One is that is is going to be enough to scratch that Infinity H, um, without feeling that I need to go to full N four rules. I think this time, but who knows? I might enjoy it that much. I might dive in with both feet. But yeah, you'll definitely you'll definitely see it. Thank you, John France. Much appreciated, buddy. You do not have to do that. Oh, honestly, folks. I mean. 
What can I say? <laughs> Thank you. That's all I can say. I've lost my train of thought. I'm trying, I'm trying to paint. I'm trying to paint. What do I need to do? Um, I think what we'll do is we'll start to get some of that um, a really... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a black wash, a null oil, and I'm going to thin it right down with some Lamia Medium and just try and um, really get it into the into the panels just to kind of... So as you can see, it's kind of... Let's get it a little bit closer here. You can see there's like a lot of panels and stuff on it. It'll pull, it'll pull out the silver on the legs and things, and it'll just break up the uh, break up the, the band like the bands between the between the armor panels and stuff. So yeah, let's do that. Um, Crabby seeing those model like those models. They look pretty cool, man. Yeah, they are nice. They they're really really nice models. To be fair, nice the metal as well. So there's a, there's a bit of weight in them. They are metal sculpts. And these um, resin bases are from Micro Art Studio. Um, so those, you can just kind of see the bases on them there. Kind of like textured, a little bit like like a little bit like Necromunda bases and stuff. But I've had these for quite some time and I've never done anything with them. I'd, I'd basically built them and primed them. Um, and I'd obviously played some games with them to play the game and to try the rules out and stuff. So I'd done that, but that was as far as I'd got really. Um, Tony said, I wish companies would number the parts on the sprues. Do you know what it is, mate? I watched an unboxing of um, the Hulk model. Um, has that just jumped off my chat? I watched an unboxing of the Hulk model, and yeah, they're, they're numbered on the sprues, but then the instructions don't tell you the numbers. Uh, where are we at? Steve's seen uh, kind of Claudio. Scott, seen anyone seen Wolfenstein game on Kickstarter at the moment? Yeah, I think the problem with it is, mate, is the cool stuff is very expensive. So it's there's some there's some really amazing stuff that you can get for your money, but uh, it's, it's it ain't cheap when you're starting to upgrade to the nice plastic terrain bits and stuff. And unfortunately, that's. That's the stuff that you'll want, isn't it? Because you won't be able to get that later. Um, I'm kind of... Uh, I wouldn't say... Like, I'm not burned out on, on Kickstarter. But I'm less... I'm less excited about Kickstarter these days, I think. I just think that there's... There's so much cool stuff coming out. Like, generally. Not, you know, not when there's a lockdown on. But there's so much cool stuff coming out. That actually I'm quite happy to wait for that kind of stuff to hit retail and pick it up uh, when it's available then because in the meantime rather than having my money tied up I can be spending it on uh, I can be spending it on other stuff but it depends what it is to be fair I've booked, I've, I've, I have backed Kickstarters which I, which I don't regret so for example I, I did back the Walking Dead Kickstarter many many years ago it was the first ever Kickstarter I did and I had such a good experience from that that I, I did go on and back things like um, Resident Evil 2, I backed, and I got that Kickstarter. Um, trying to think what else I've done as well. Uh, Terry, oh, Terry, man. Honestly, there is no need. That is massively appreciated, buddy. I hope uh, I hope that wasn't a mistake, mate, and since you've had that eye surgery that you, <laughs> you only meant to put one pound in that, did you? Um, if you did, let me know, and I'll get it refunded. <laughs> um... But yeah, thank you so much, Terry. Um, where are we at? I'm still well behind on this chat. Well, Barry Clive is in. Hello, Barry. Um, Nick's saying, washes of pure liquid talent. That the arm, mate. Um, Barry's saying he hasn't missed the Deptacon in years. Really disappointing, but also necessary. Yeah, it was necessary, mate. And uh, like I say, at, at the time, I, I, it felt... I think it wasn't even at the time. I think by the time it was it was cancelled, I think I knew it was coming kind of thing. But leading up to that, I think I had this false hope that uh, hopefully this this whole thing wasn't going to be too bad and would it, it would kind of blow over, I think. And it just it just goes to show, doesn't it, that uh, <laughs> what a mug I was. <laughs> um think, thinking that we were gonna get out of this quickly. I mean I, obviously every every country's dealing with things very slightly differently. Every political leader's dealing with things very slightly differently and um, we're all at different stages in that as well. So it's quite hard to know exactly when we'll, when we'll come out of lockdown, 
when uh, things will start to get back to anything resembling some kind of normality. But all I would say in the meantime, folks, is stay in touch with people. Make sure that you don't feel isolated. For everyone that's out there with their families and they, they need a little bit of kind of, um, a little bit of, I was going to say a bit of alone time, but that's got a completely different connotation. You need some kind of time to yourself, don't you, sometimes, to just get a bit of hobby done and that. It's a nice break because as much as we all love our families, um, you know, you, you do need a, you know, you, you love them because you miss them. <laughs> and at the minute, you're not getting a chance to miss them. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you know, get get out and do some hobby, even if it's coming on a, onto a live stream, be, it, be that mine or anybody else's, or if it's... Um, you know, hanging out in a in a Facebook group or a Discord chat or any of that kind of stuff, just never ever feel like you're on your own. And especially those folks that are that are on their own, that are kind of in lockdown, living alone kind of thing. Like, reach out. Every everybody in the community is there to kind of help each other, and we'll and we'll, we'll get through it all in one piece together. Hopefully, um, yeah. Just take care of yourselves, folk. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, because it's a horrible time for everyone, and some people have got it a lot worse. So, and uh, just kind of be thankful for the good stuff, I guess. That's the, I think that sometimes that's that's part of the trick, really, is that it's easy to focus on the stuff that's that's not so good, and the, and the, and the, the stuff we're missing and the things we can't do. Just think of, uh, you know, if you've got your health kind of thing, and getting all deep and meaningful now, aren't I? Completely went off track there. Um, let's chat, let's catch up on this. Beauty said someone to it, to which I don't want my name on the screen. That's the way to sell it for me, mate, thanks. Um, where are we at? Barry said I need to figure out how to get in the Discord. Um, yes, mate, I did. So if you if you go into the, into the um, if you go into the Patreon um, posts, the last post, the, the, the most recent post, is another link into the Discord group, mate. So basically, if you if you you are a member of the, of the Patreon, but for everybody else, it once you join the the Patreon, those posts that I've put um, become public to see for you. Um, they're obviously private for the folks that haven't um, joined yet. So everyone's a potential customer. Um, so I'm not. I'm gonna have to lighten this one up, I think. So I'm 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 pleased with how it's picking out the panel lines, but it's really darkened down that brighter blue so they're gonna have to be uh they're gonna have to be brightened up i think after that um <laughs> where we are crappy vision say are you live streaming for the gw announcement on saturday mate um i hadn't planned to would would, would folks would folks want that is that what we did last time was we all kind of hung out in the patreon chat and uh, and talked about it there but do folks want to? Do folks want to hang out for the for the GW live stream? The only thing I would say is that the last couple haven't been that impressive, so it might it might be just them. Um, an hour or so of me going, oh, oh, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> like, so if people want to, I'm probably uh, I'm sure I'll be available. It's Saturday. I'm not going out anywhere. <laughs> I'm home. Um, if folks if folks want to do it, I'm happy to do it. It all uh, it all helps me to put some more stuff together. Um, where are we at? Um, Kelly C and Infinity. I have to put Operation Red Veil together. Operation Red Veil is an awesome set. Dread the little bits with my spinal cord injury hands. To be honest, they are fiddly as hell. Um, buddy, they they are very very fiddly. Um. I built, I haven't got the Red Veil set, but I do have the Operation Ice Storm and Operation Cold Front sets. And uh, whilst, because they're 3D um, sculpts, three like 3D models, um, what, what am I looking for? Like, because they're digital 3D sculpts as opposed to kind of hand sculpted, the actual, the connections on them are really, really good and they fit well. But I had to, I quite struggled getting them together. I had to really clean them up and get um to get them clean before the super glue would go off. So yeah, make sure you've either got like some super glue activator or something like that, or or make sure you've given them a good scrub or soak them overnight or whatever. 
because I, I actually struggled to get the bits together. Um, so it's kind of like a lesson learned for me, I think, when it comes to Infinity stuff. Once once they stuck, they were nailed solid and there was no issue with them. Um, but, yeah, it just took me a little while to get them together. Um, Robert Marshall, I'll say, I'll say good night to you all. Good night, Robert. Thank you very much for popping in. Um, where are we at? Everybody's chatting amongst themselves now. That's a problem when I'm miles behind. 3D, digital 3D renders. I don't know if it is a 3D render, mate, because a, a render for me is just the, is the digital version of what the model will look like. I think what I mean is, is that they're, digital, they're digitally sculpted as opposed to hand sculpted, like in with green stuff. I think that's the words I'm trying to get my head around. But I keep saying 3D, and it's not, it's not, they're all 3D, even if you, even if you, even if you sculpt with green stuff, um, they're 3D, aren't they? Um, Luke's in, just posted his latest mini in the Facebook group, not bad out for two hours painting. Luke, your painting is awesome, mate. You're smashing that, that uh, the Mythic Battle stuff out at the minute. You're absolutely flying through it. I don't know. I tell you what, I, I apologize, by the way, folks, for keep going off camera with this model. But I, like I said before, this is I'm just sitting painting. <laughs> I'm just enjoying myself here. I'm just sitting hanging out with you lot. Um, yeah, I'm uh, just cracking through it, really, just trying to make a little bit of progress. I've been painting lots of different minis, and, and I'll probably keep mixing it up on the stream as well, just to just to kind of showcase some different bits and pieces. I've been painting in the background as well at home, so I've been doing some of my Blood Red Sky stuff. Uh, I've been painting more of my Hellboy stuff, as I, as I mentioned before. Um, and, I, and I'm, I'm quite enjoying just mixing it up, really, and um, doing like bits of different stuff instead of just focusing on, on one particular thing and getting burned out on it, really. Um, Busey said, if there's a live stream for the GW preview on Saturday, I'll definitely do a couple of super chats. I, <laughs> I appreciate that, mate, but I, I'm not, I, I don't like, of course, the one, <laughs> as he said it, Marco, thank you very much, buddy. Marco's now in the Patreon. That's it. He's in, he's in with the, he's, he's come in to make us all feel bad about how good his painted models are. <laughs> I'm just kidding, mate. Um, thank you so much, Marco. Um, yeah, if, if if people fancy it, might as well we might as well do something. Um, Gene saying good for you keeps the keeps the painting interesting. Um, yeah, I think at this point, mate, what I don't want to do is get like burned out by it because at the minute, I'm I'm painting stuff that I already own that I've that I've never got round to to painting in the past or something new and shiny is take, taking my kind of taken my fancy and I've, I've gone and done something else. So I was concentrating on painting my Kings of War army. I, I am 100% committed to that Kings of War slow grow. I started it off. I will 100% hit every, um, hit every, uh, what they called, like dead, dead zone, I was going to say. Every time, milestone, that's the word I was trying to think of. I'll hit every milestone and make sure that I do it because if I, if I don't do it, I'm not exactly leading by example, am I? Um, but I've run, I've run out of dwarfs at the minute. I've, I've got enough um, done, which basically gets me through my thousand points for the end of April. But I am going to have to buy some more, to be fair, um, to to keep that to keep that on track. But I'm enjoying painting those. So in the meantime, before I go and buy more dwarfs, um, I'm just going to work through some of the stuff I've got. I'm I'm kind of just I'm also just trying to get my hand back in again. Really, I've, I've not painted a lot in like in. Oh, sorry about that, folks. Off the screen again. I've not painted. I've not painted a lot um, for a while, so I'm just basically just kind of just trying to just trying to up my either up my standard or up my speed a little bit again, really, and get back get back into it. So that's the that's the plan, as they say. That's the plan. So, folks. <laughs> Nick says, "Dead zone is life." That's why it's on my it's on my mind, mate. It's on my mind because I will definitely be uh, doing some dead zone stuff purely because I just like 
I've got time on my hands now. Like one of the things that always put me off in the past was I, I just didn't have time to kind of like to, to get into some of these extra games. I didn't have anybody to play against. Where now, things are different. Like, th like you all know that I love chopping and changing between games. But if, I, if I've got time to paint stuff up now, if I've got time to like to film stuff and make videos about it, like if I get a starter box for something and like unboxing it is a is a video and kind of telling you what I think about it and learning how doing how to play on that kind of stuff and you know it, it's it's all content that I can do for you. Where in the past, getting the time to do that kind of stuff was just nigh on impossible. Where now it's now it's all possible. That's the, that's the difference. So yeah, things like dead zone stuff, I will hundred percent be. Uh, be doing some dead zone stuff. Um, because the other side of it is like, like dead zone terrain is awesome to use for infinity. So like that's the other thing that I, that I haven't really got is I haven't got like I haven't got like lots of terrain. I haven't got lots of I've got a lot of war cry terrain now to be fair. Um, and it's all painted. But I haven't got lots of terrain. I haven't got like lots of, I've got hardly any sci-fi terrain. So it's all stuff I need to sort of build up now. Um, and in the early days, like in the, over the next three months, while I'm, I'm still getting like a, like a salary from my work, if you like, um, and I've and I've also obviously got like things like Patreon money and things coming in, um, that's that's what I'll probably be sort of starting to invest in now. I'll probably reach out to companies to see if anybody wants to have anything reviewed or featured on the channel or anything like that. That will uh, help me uh, sort of build up my terrain and things, mats that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, that's that's what. That's what I'll be doing short term, I think. Um, <laughs> it might G says, take a drink every time he goes off screen. If you do that, mate, you will be wrecked. I'm not even taking a drink. <laughs> Clever going, he said, he did said dead zone. He said dead zone. Busey says, actually, you need to be careful because you might be classed like those reaction anime people. I think the difference, mate, is that the people that have been doing the reactions to the GW stuff. It's generally kind of uh, they've not been shown the GW stuff on on like on the screen. What they've been doing is essentially just reacting to it, and, and the idea is you you are watching on one screen the um, the GW stuff while you're watching on another screen the person reacting to it. So, um, I don't know what what do, what do folks think? It's because because sometimes the stuff that I think people want to see are, are the things I think that. People, what was I going to say? Sometimes the, thing, the things that I think would be dull, other people think are great ideas. And the things that I think are great ideas, other people think are dull. So it's about getting, the, getting it right, isn't it? Um, Adam Edgar. Nice to, <laughs> nice to, I'm just laughing at Peter's comment there. Nice to see you, future boy. How are you doing? Good morning to you, sir. Hope you're well. Hope the family's well. Hope work's not driving you too insane and you've... You've managed to get through another day without murdering somebody. It's always a good. It's always a good sign when you can go home without blood on your hands. Uh, Peter saying we'll need more booze if you if you're taking a drink uh, every time. Um, Krabby says don't feel like you have to do it, bud. Just thought it would be a good topic whilst painting. It's also a different time of the day. It is. It is that to be fair, mate. It's kind of like is it normally like two o'clock or something or three o'clock? Um, I might do, mate. To be fair, we'll we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll have a look over the next couple of days and make sure, I was going to say make sure my wife hasn't got any plans, but like, actually my wife's off on holiday next week, so she's she's having a week off, Um, so for all we're not, <laughs> we're obviously not going anywhere, we were supposed to be away on holiday next week, we were going to go to, uh, to Butlins in the UK, uh, which is like a kind of like a like a holiday camp type place, obviously as I said before we're trying to, trying to save up Trying to save up my money to, to let this all happen and go full time. So we've had to rain we've had to rain back on some of the types of holidays we have, of which Butlins was the, was a, is a bit of a compromise because we took our little boy there last year and he absolutely loved it. Um so there was plenty of stuff for him to do. So yeah, so we were supposed to be going there next week, but obviously um that's been cancelled. Um and my wife's got a week off work. She didn't bother canceling the holidays, so it'll be quite nice for her to have a week off. Um because she's, she's still really busy, in fairness to her. She's still grinding through work on a daily basis. But what it does mean, folks, is it means that I'm not on daddy daycare all alone every day next week. So I might be able to try and get some more videos done, or at least kind of get some more stuff painted up and get ready 
ready for the channel. Um, Christian saying sci-fi terrain is coming. Yes, mate, you did say that you'd been sending, uh, sending some uh, 3D printed stuff in the post. I'll uh, massively appreciate that, mate. You, you go above and beyond to, to help me, mate. So, yeah, thanks for that. Scott says, I've got a dead zone terrain here for you. The Dwarves from Kings of War starter set for Iron Hold and Brock Riders I may sell. I might be interested in them Brock Riders then, mate, because I don't have any Brock Riders. Um... Where are we at? Adam saying, just starting the day, we'll see what happens. Was ready to strangle the storm in yesterday. It's bad enough, mate, when your customers are giving you grief, but when you're getting grief from the folks at work as well, that's not what you need at all, is it? Claudia says, I don't care about GW, but always in for a stream and always keep up with the young folks. That, to be honest, Claudia, I mean, you raise a good point there. Like, I'm I'm not a, like, a, you you could never really call me a GW fanboy, um, but, but I... You know they're they're too they're too big to to not keep abreast of what they're doing. Like they they can drive a lot of stuff in the market. Like people do tend to follow what they do. And for me now is like as a as a content dude. Or what was it? What was it? Um, um, a, a, a video videologist, <laughs> as uh, Tony's son said. Um, you've got to kind of keep abreast of this kind of stuff. I've, I've got I've got to kind of see what's what's happening in the industry. What's What's the latest news? What armies are coming up? It's 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 nice to be able to like when somebody asks me my, my opinion on something, I, I kind of have enough knowledge to be able to to kind of talk about it. So so I do tend to keep up with that kind of stuff for my own. It's like research for my job, I guess these days now the way. But it was but I always I always did because I was I'm just interested really. The industry as a whole kind of interests me as much as it's just as it's GW, so. Interesting, anyway. Um, Nick says, "Which Butlins were you going to?" I was going to go to Skegness, mate. We went last. We went last year. Um, similar, might have been in the summer actually. Was it? I don't think it was a six weeks holiday. So I feel like it was around August bank holiday. It might have been, and the weather was absolutely fantastic. It was blazing hot sunshine, and uh, we just went for like four days or something like during the week. But there was just so much for the little guy to do. Like he was like blown away with like meeting all the big kind of like. You know, like what they're called, like the, the guys in the costumes and stuff like that, the like the characters and things. He was over the moon, like meeting that kind of stuff. Um, like we got, we went down to the beach during the day because it was blazing hot, and he was just playing in the pool. And like, there's like a bit of an outdoor pool as well. And like I say, the weather was so good. He was out running about in the out, outdoor pool. It was just really chilled, and and half the bother when you've got a little one of that age, like three year old. Um, and I think he was only he was only two last year when we went to be fair to him um when you've got a little one of that age um if they're happy and they're having a good time it makes mine and my wife's kind of like sort of break even better as well because he's just he's just easy to, de to deal with kind of thing um <laughs> just seeing flying mama's comment there what do you mean costumes is the characters it's because I'm trying to do three things. I'm trying to paint. I'm trying to kind of control everything from a digital perspective here, live streaming. And I'm trying to think on the fly while I'm talking. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, we we just had an awesome time. It's not like, I remember going to kind of Butlins when I was a kid and stuff. And, and obviously as, as you get a bit older and stuff and people get a bit a bit snobby about holidays. Like I, I obviously have like the company I worked for, like, People who are relatively well paid and stuff, and they've got quite sort of senior jobs, and you know, people are off on safari, and uh, you know, they're, they're having like a, a three weeks in Florida and that kind of stuff. And you know, pe people kind of raise their eyes when you go, oh, I'm just going to Butlins for four days. But yeah, bollocks to them. Bollocks to them, mate. If you're having a good time, it doesn't matter where the hell you are. So, yeah, we were, we were due to go. We were due to go again next week, but um, yeah, not happening, mate, now. Um, Busey says, I like the live streams, to be honest. If the topic or content is good, then it's a bonus. I enjoyed the reactions on the Discord when the last one was live. That was cool. What we could do, mate, is that even if we don't do it, we could just do, like, a Hangout thing. It doesn't have to be a YouTube one. If everybody else wants to come on camera and stuff, we could do, like, a Zoom chat or something, or whatever it's called, or, or house party or something like that. If you all just want to get on a chat together, we could, we could do that for the, uh, for the GW thing. And that means, like, anybody that wants to join can join. Maybe he's put something on the Facebook group. Um, 
and then we're not then it's not like it's not like me streaming for your your pleasure kind of thing it's just we're all just hanging out um that would be kind of cool if people fancy doing that and then it means that uh we're not crossing any we're not crossing any live um live reaction boundaries then are we um where are we Mark saying, do you have your next podcast sorted? I kind of have it sorted. It's not, it's not recorded yet. Um, but uh, Christian is going to be my next guest on the podcast. Um, we were going to do it last week, and I, I got sidetracked and forgot to get back to him. But the plan is I think we'll do something this week, I think, uh, and get that up for, for the April podcast. So, yeah, uh, so the idea is I'm, I'm going to be kind of I'm going to be chatting to all kinds of folks, really. I'm going to be chatting to people in the industry, people, people who own companies, people who are sculptors, and people who make games and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to be chatting to people in the community, so people that like to, sort of Patreon supporters, because I guess at the end of the day, it's like it, it goes to the Patreons. So it's nice to find out a little bit about the different folks who are in the group and stuff as well. Um, so there'll be some of that. Um, and I'm, I'm considering some proper, just like some left field topics as well. Not not always about gaming, to be fair. We we'll try some different bits and pieces. So, um, because it's for for Patreons, like it's um, I can be a bit, I can be a bit wider in the approach to it. I suppose it doesn't always have to be completely about gaming stuff. It's just a a bit of banter and things. Maybe it's try and chat to some other YouTubers or podcasters or. You know, just just interesting. Really, the idea is that they're about a half an hour long. They're a bit of background stuff to stick on, like while you're painting or just while you're out for a, a little bit of a walk or something like that. And just something a bit different, something different to what you normally hear. Um, and everybody everybody's got something to say. Do you know what I mean? Like nobody's um, everybody's opinions are interesting. So yeah, that's the plan, really. Um. G Daddy clips in, it says hi folks. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Scott's in there, built as well. The riders are separate. Ah, oh, you're a legend, mate. You've done it. That's what I would do as well. Um Adam says, damn straight. Anyway, that was yesterday. Today's a new day. Yes, mate. Onwards and upwards, isn't it? Um Luke says, What was the first mini you painted, Andy? Everybody else too. Mine would have been a hero quest mini. Poor buggers, I had no idea what hit them. Mine was a blood ball mini, mate. So after me, um, Slayton Blood Bowl on the on the sporadically bored podcast. Um, uh, when I first was became aware of miniatures, um, I'll tell you what, let me just switch over to the main screen a second while I have a drink in five minutes. When I first became aware of miniatures, it was uh, aware of miniatures. It was through a friend at school, and he had an older brother who painted miniatures, and he had like he was into Blood Bowl. So we decided as like kids, wouldn't it be cool if, if we did what your big brother did kind of thing? So we used to go to a toy shop in Sunland City Centre called Joseph's Toy Shop where they sold Citadel miniatures, the, the old metal ones on in the little blister packs and stuff. And I think we just bought like a miniature each and a couple of tins of like Humbrol paint and that kind of crap. And um, they were Blood Bowl miniatures because that's that's what he played, so that's what we well, that's what we decided to buy really. I never ever played the game back then. So I think that was the first miniature I ever really painted. When I got back into the hobby later, like when I got older, it was a Space Marine, to be fair, was the first ever miniature I painted. I've still got it somewhere, actually. And it was because I bought one of those little sets, you know, the ones GW do, that there's like like three or five Space Marines in and you get a few different, like a few, like five pots of paint or something like that. It was one of those. And then from that, when I started painting a bit more seriously, um, I got I, I built a Space Marine chapter, I, I built a Raven Guard chapter, and I and I painted a full army essentially, and um, and then and then decided to learn how to play, and 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 then that story's um, that's an old story about how awful that experience was and how I sold sold all my Space Marines and went to play Malifaux instead, and the rest's history. But yeah, it, it was, um, yeah, inter interesting times. Interesting times. Uh, let's go back paint here. So I think what I'm going to do, I think we'll now start to try and highlight this up a little bit now. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to highlight that up yet because I'll highlight it once I've done all of the, the cloths and stuff. And these like line troopers have got like trousers on, which I'm going to 
I'm going to paint like a like a stone colour, a camo stone, a Kargi stone, uh, Karak stone. Sorry, it says. Um, fly my <laughs> what do you mean? Costumes. Scott saying I could do a, a dive through drop off for you. I tell you what, mate. If I don't um, if I don't manage to pick up any more, mate, that might be an option. I'll be in touch. Um, although to be fair, it's not. Uh, what's the word? What's it, what's it called? It's not. Um, Oh, not, not essential travel, mate. So I don't, I don't want you getting into into bother for travelling around dropping miniatures off. That's for sure. Um, uh, right, oh. right. Margot's first mini was a Jean Steeler Neophyte Hybrid, September twenty eighteen. Have you only been painting for two? If you've only been painting for two years, mate, I'm even more annoyed at how good your paint is. <laughs> I'll need to have a chat with you at some point, Marco, about how you got into it then, because that's, it's unusual um, to get into it, like, so late. I mean, I, I did, to be fair, but, like, um, you don't hear of it so much these days. Pretty much everybody you talk to seems to have been into their whole life, into the hobby, and into painting. Um, Joe Q. Thank you so much, Joe. You should not have done that, but I massively appreciate that. And it's lovely to see you in the chat as well. I don't know whether you've commented on anything. I've not seen your name yet because I'm, I haven't scrolled down. But thank you so much. Really, really kind of you. Um, yeah, I'm terrible. <laughs> I, it's, I hope I never get used to it. That's, let's put it that way. I hope it never. Um, I never stop kind of appreciating that kind of stuff. Um, Peter's first ever mini was a Space Hulk Terminator edi first edition. Still have them and the set. Wow, Peter. You still have them. <laughs> Take a shot, everybody. I was off screen again. Um, that's interesting. You still got them, mate. I should have uh, done this bit before I put the black wash on, I think, but never mind. We'll, uh, we'll be giving it a couple of coats anyway. Um, David says, don't quite remember his first painted mini. He was helping his friend paint his fantasy battle army. Sure, he went through five different ones in a year. It may have been dwarves. I just jumped off my screen there. Um, there we are. Oh, I'm just gonna just gonna dive in here. I've I've, I've completely lost my, my my point of where I was. I think. Oh no, I found it now. I found it. Um, Steve says, "There you go again, seeing you get sunshine up north." Um, <laughs> But Butlins is not. I suppose Butlins is up north, but it's like Lincolnshire, way, isn't it? Is it Lincolnshire? It's um, it's certainly not. Uh, it's certainly not up north where I. Everywhere is up north to you, though, mate. To be fair, isn't it? Um, Scott says his holidays are always wild camping, but that's nice, mate. Isn't it? That's that's your that's your hobby as well. That's what you love doing. Um, I used to love camping when I was a bit younger. I was in I was in scouts and stuff like that, and I used to go away with like mates and stuff camping and. Uh, and enjoy that stuff, but uh, I think the the young one, I, I think, um, might enjoy camping when he gets a little bit older. And I once took my my older lads camping, just the three of us, me me and the two older lads, and that was a good laugh. Um, they must have only been about seven or something like that at the time. It was good fun. Um, my mum says. Uh, life and holidays are what you make it. A hundred percent they are, Ruth. Honestly, like, to be honest, I mean, for all this lockdown stuff is like, um, it's a pain in the backside and I'd much rather be able to get like out and about and stuff. I can't really complain. Like, the weather's been pretty decent. I'm fortunate enough to have a garden for the little one to get out in and stuff. Like, we've had barbecues the last couple of weekends because the weather's been nice. Like, I'm getting to spend time with my wife and my son which I haven't really, like, I haven't, like, to, to the level I'm doing it now, like, I've never managed to do that for quite some time, like, with, like, work and things. So, like, and then, and then I've obviously got the good news about my job and, uh, and about, like, the YouTube channel and stuff. So, life's pretty good at the minute. I mean, I know not everybody's in the, in the same situation, so, I, and, I, and I feel, I feel for them. That, that, I mean, there's a few people I know, and I don't, I don't want to say their names because obviously, yeah. Uh, they might not want me to mention it, but obviously, like they're they're in lockdown apart from each other. 
because of like being in different places when the lockdown happened and um there's some relationships or not um you know you might you might be in a relationship you don't want to be in and and now you're locked down in the in at home with that person as well like there's some people in some sticky situations and some and that's without all of the health issues and everything else that's going on so yeah i've got to count my blessings honestly like from where I was kind of six to 12 months ago about being quite down about things and stuff. Honestly, like it's amazing how things can turn around. So I'd say that to anybody really, like no matter how bad things are, like we can always get better. So even when you least expect it. Um. So yeah, keep, keep the smiles, keep the smiles going. What, I'm painting a bit of skin. I, what, Oh, maybe I should have painted that a different colour. Never mind. I don't know if that's meant to be skin colour there or what. But at least it lightens it up anyway. Um, yeah, I'm painting off screen again. Get, <laughs> get yourselves drunk, folks. <laughs> um, where are we at? Nixie and Butlin's bloody fantastic for the kids. If you ever come down to the southwest for a holly bob, mate, give us a shout for a cider. I will do, mate. I mean, to be honest, the reason we kind of went to the um, the one closer to us it's just um, journey time for the little one. Obviously, the further south they go, the weather tends to be better. So um, I think as he gets a bit older, we might well start to venture a bit further afield as well. But yeah, we just tend to... Uh, it's like well, if, if we've been to centre parks, we tend to, go, tend to go to the one that's in Cumbria rather than the one that's in Nottingham, purely because it's like about an hour's drive for us. And it's not too far away, is it? We tend to go there like with, with family and stuff and share a lodge and... Like, the little one gets on with these cousins and stuff, and obviously, like, Jason, my brother-in-law, is, like, probably my, my best mate, really. Um, so we obviously get a bit of, bit of time to go for a beer on an evening and stuff like that and make the most of it, really. I mean, it's, it's nice that, like, I get on really well with my wife's family and stuff, so it's nice to have those kind of family holidays, really. Um... Yeah, Beauty's saying, sounds good, but no Facebook. Yeah, that's all right, mate. I don't think we could... Facebook probably wouldn't be the best way to do it, mate, because um, it's a bit tricky to to, um, to do any kind of, like, video stuff with each other. So I think, yeah, something like Zoom or or um, House Party. I think it's House Party that, um, that Christian was telling me about. I downloaded the app and I haven't used it yet, but we could do something like that for, for um, Saturday. Um... Where we are, idiot proof Dalek. Nice to see you, mate. How are you doing? Talking of uh, awesome painters, there's one right there. Uh, how's tricks, mate? Are you, are you painting much at the minute? You got more Kings of War on the table? Are you doing something a bit different at the moment? What's uh, what's appertaining, as they say? Um, Gene saying, like that idea, good general topic, and share opinions on the reveals. Can't see you watching a mugging twit. Would be a draw unto itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that. I think that's kind of maybe a, a better way to do it. I'll stick something in the Facebook group and we'll set something up. And then those that want to do it um, can obviously get together and have a have a natter and stuff. And but don't don't feel embarrassed if you want to just if you want to just join and listen to what people want to say, or you don't feel comfortable coming on camera or anything like that. It's not going to be recorded. It's not going to be broadcast anywhere. It's just. It'll just be folks like having a chat really, just like a little video chat. So don't worry about that stuff. Um, Nick saying, first mini was the same for a lot of people of a certain age. The second edition plastic space marine came in three pieces, body, gun and backpack. Yeah, that was kind of um, a similar thing for me. Then, mate, well, like I say, when I got back into it later, um, it was exactly that one, the one where you, the guns basically got put on from the front it's funny to look at them now because they look so so kind of stocky and stunted in comparison to things like kind of primaris marines and stuff um david says having or being a guest on a show is always a blast and fun to listen to yeah i, I think that's the the thing mate it's just um like it's nice to get some alternative opinions and to hear people's kind of backstories about how did they get into the hobby and what kind of stuff do they like? What do they like outside of the hobby as well? I mean, like Christian's 3D printing stuff is a, is, a, is something I want to kind of touch on when we chat. And obviously he's uh, into like your D&D &D stuff as well. D&D is not something I know a lot about for all I'm interested in it. 
it's not something that I have a lot of knowledge on. So it's exactly the kind of thing like I, I I think I'd be interesting to to like to to have a chat about and stuff. So yeah, if anybody's got anybody who who like think of anybody else they'd like to hear on the chat as well, I'm always on the the Patreon podcast. I'm always happy to talk to folks. Happy happy days. Sorry, I'm going. I always go silent when I'm painting the fiddly bits. <laughs> I try not to because it, it, it like it happens for about like five or six seconds, and then it suddenly dawns on me, oh yeah, there's people watching. <laughs> Somebody's out there, and they want you to talk. Um, Lee Russ is heading off as well. It's his great stream. Thanks. Cheers, mate. Scott seen his first mini was a space orc, and Gretchen's from second edition. Got some, um, Mark's first one was Rick from the All Out War game. Not a bad first mini, mate. Gene sent me too with D&D a few hours earlier. His brother thumped us good for screwing with his shit. Uh, yeah. And he says, you can't call them Humbrol paints crap, mate. Come on. Um, no, they weren't, that, to be honest, they weren't crap. Sorry, that, not, that wasn't what I meant. I think it was just that they shouldn't have, um, it's not what we should have been painting them with. That's, that's for sure. I painted a lot of my Hero Quest stuff with Humbrol paints as well, to be fair. And it's, uh, <laughs> I've had to strip it all off. So, although to be fair, it came off okay. So, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Um, where are we at? Abusey saying the humble lids are perfect. They were, but you know, I always used to like flip them off and then they would flip upside down and get the paint on the tabletop and stuff like that. Like so, um, But they always went back on nice. You never spilt any, did you? I also don't remember thinning them down, <laughs> if I'm honest. Uh, where are we at? Not essential, thanks, mate. That's what, exactly what I was looking for. Um, testers enamels were ass. I don't, um, I don't, I don't know where we tried the testers ones. Phil's was an old Chaos Warrior 22 years ago. Thank you again, Joe Q, for that um, for that donation there. Much appreciated. Um, Peter said, I wish I just started the hobby. Are sure it's easier? I'm not sure if it is easier now, mate. I mean, it's there's more information, but sometimes with more information comes more confusion. At least when we kind of, well, I say we. You obviously started before me, mate, because I uh, didn't start until later. But I think when, when like, the, the eras of us starting... Um, there wasn't the information, so you just, you didn't compare yourself to other people. Like, there was no Facebook to be kind of posting on. There was no YouTube for tutorials, so you just, you just did what you, you did what you, whoops, you did what you liked, you did what you wanted to. Um, and I think that, that, with that comes a bit of, a bit of freedom as well, to, a freedom to make mistakes and not worry about it. These days, you, you feel like you're constantly being uh, compared to what everybody else is doing, so... But what I would say, I mean, how I learned to paint was just by trial and error. And, and I certainly don't, I certainly make a lot of mistakes now, like in what I do. I think I would, I would like, I'd partially like to start again now from scratch with absolutely no knowledge and someone to kind of, to teach me how to do it right. Because I definitely just, I definitely just slap paint on the miniatures. <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no skill involved, I think, what I'm doing. Um, it's like when I, I learned to play golf years ago. I got, um, I used to play a lot of golf because I, I worked, I worked a job where I worked shifts. So I was constantly had like time during the days and uh, where most of the people were at work. So I started playing golf with a lot of the lads who I used to work with and um, for my 18th birthday, I got golf lessons, and um, and I was I, I was actually sort of taught how to swing properly and stuff like that. So when I, by the time I started playing on the courses and stuff with people, I had a really kind of I had a taught golf swing as opposed to just going out and hacking on the on the driving range. So my my golf was pretty decent, um, but but people used to think I was better than I was because I I looked like I knew what I was doing. I looked. I looked like I kind of was. It was a golfer. But yeah, uh, yeah. Once the kids come along, the golf stopped. The motorbike got sold, and the golf stopped. 
and I've never I've never picked up a motorbike or a or a golf club since to be fair. But I was I was playing about four days a week at one point. And this is another reason why I never got into kind of miniature stuff and that really for years. It was um it was mainly sports and things, five aside football and all those kind of things. Um what do I want to do with that cloak? Do I paint it like a beigey colour? I think I might paint the inside beige. Um what else we got going on? Um any proof, Doyle? How's the Kings of War Dwarf Army going, Andy? Been at the loop for a while. It's going well, mate. Yeah, I was just saying I've kind of I've kind of run out of um, I've run out of dwarfs at the minute, and I've not I've not bought any to um, to finish it off. I'm on track for my thousand points um, by the end of this month, so that's fine as far as the slow grow goes. Um, so yeah, I'm on track for that, but uh, I'm gonna have to get myself into gear and. Get an order into Mantic, mate, to get some more, to get some more dwarfs. I think, and get get it finished. But I'm a hundred percent committed to getting it finished. Like I said before, I don't know if you were around. I said basically that um, you know I, I started that slow grow campaign. There's no way I won't complete it because I think it's <laughs> nothing worse than somebody starting something and then just basically walking away from it and leaving everybody else just to get on with it kind of thing. So. The whole point of starting that off was the motivation for me as well to make sure that I was held accountable to it and, and I painted my army. And, and to be fair, the games I've had, I've, I've really, really enjoyed. And obviously at this time, it's not easy to get out and get games. But if I have my army finished for when this is all over, that would be even better, wouldn't it? And get straight out and start playing some games. So yeah, that's it's going well, mate. Thanks for asking. Um, let me just do that little bit there before I completely just forget that you were all there. Um, where else we at? Steve so in his first miniature he painted was a swap with a mate at school for some clear pipe I dug in my garden. <laughs> Bloody hell, mate. Different times, eh? Mark was says he first heard about miniature in spring 2018 from a friend. Did some research and bought the Kill Team starter set. That's not a bad place to start, mate. Then the Kill Team starter set was a good purchase. The terrain in it was fantastic. Tim was back in the 80s with a Citadel Goblin Archer. Huge break. First miniature painted three years back was Bog Standard Space Marine. Yeah, I think we all got back into that. Adams was a Hero Quest Mini. Um, John's was the first one, was a Barbarian Fighter for Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Barry uh, James was a skeleton reaper. Barry's was uh, historical miniatures. It didn't one summer did an entire division of American Civil War US and CS. CS. I don't know what that is in fifteen millimeters. Wow. Um, Flying Mammal, did you glue on the gargoyle's head on the Hero Quest minis? Do you know what it is? Uh, I was taking them apart to um, to to clean them and paint them and I hadn't glued on the um I hadn't glued on the wings and I thought I mustn't have glued on the head as well but it was on quite tight and I didn't I didn't want to pull it and bend the little kind of like spike things on the top so I'm not sure I'm not sure I pro if I didn't glue the um if I didn't glue the wings on the back I probably haven't glued the head um but it's it's on pretty tight to be fair um Let's paint this that kind of light grey colour and get some get some uh, lighter to it. Um, Joe says, Paul and I are here in the background chatting to each other but watching you too. Very nice to see the two of yous. I hope you're really, really well. And I hope you're, uh, I hope you, I hope you're managing to, to fight the boredom at the minute. Yeah, I mean, you guys in Spain have a, um, a completely different lockdown to what we're going through at the minute. Like at least... In the UK, we've we've kind of we're allowed to get out and get a little bit of exercise and stuff, really, as long as you observe the social distance and stuff. So uh, that's kind of taking the pressure off a little bit, so you can actually get out, even if you like, if you live in a if, in, in a home with no outside space, at least it's allowing you to get out and get some fresh air and things. I think you guys have been pretty much kind of almost under house arrest. Um, so yeah, it's it's tough times, folks. 
But I tell you what, I would certainly once once this is over and things begin to get back to a to a somewhat somewhat new normal, whatever that looks like, I'm definitely going to be trying to get around events and um, game shops and um, conventions and things. Try and get out and meet as many people as possible, because honestly, people have been people have been so so supportive. The least that can do is try and get out and and see some of you folks. Um, Christians was his epic tyrannid, and the first proper size was a Goliath with a shotgun from first edition Necromunda. Well, there's it. There is some great memory trips, mate. You're right, Peter. Um, Peter says, <laughs> Tim says it's unusual how sunny it's been in the lockdown. No lockdown, it would have lashed it down. You are not wrong, mate. Um, you're not wrong. Because if it does la the other thing is, I, I don't know what I don't know whether it's psychological though, because if it if it is awful outside, because there's been a couple of days where the weather's been pretty gar garbage up here in the northeast, and that makes me feel worse than it does actually when it's nice and sunny outside, and I still can't really go anywhere. It's weird, like uh, it's it's like I prefer it to be sunny and being locked locked down than I do for it to be really bad weather, because I think the bad weather is quite depressing to be fair. And, it, and I think it makes it worse. It almost lays it on where you go, like, oh, God, it's like, I've got to stop here and the weather's awful. And, like, I don't know, I think it just kind of gets on top of you sometimes. So, actually, I'm not I'm not sure if I, like, I, I think I prefer the fact that it's nice weather and I can't go anywhere. Because at least I can kind of open the doors and open the windows and get some air in. So, um, yeah. Where are we at? Yeah, Peter's saying it's made exercise almost bearable. Um, yeah, I mean, my, my wife's really kind of, like, she, she's, she's a, not a fitness freak, that's the wrong, wrong thing to say, but she's like, she's really heavily into her, like, exercise and stuff like that, and uh, she always tries to keep as fit as she can, but with her traveling and stuff and being away with work, she always, like, struggles to keep in kind of a routine where, She's been making a real effort of it of going out for a run every day. And she's like smashing like five miles. Like going going out for a half hour and smashing in five miles kind of thing. And it's like she's she's like feeling quite motivated by this. Because not having to be away with work all the time has given her some time to actually to do the stuff that she wants to do for herself, actually. And this is what I mean about like we we're, we're really lucky as a family. We're we're in a really fortunate position that actually, like We've got to count our blessings. There's, there's people in a lot worse situations, and so whilst I might have the odd bad day where I'm a bit down in the dumps about stuff, in the grand scheme of things, I I really have to kind of thank my lucky stars, really. Um, we've seen exciting Christians on the podcast. Yeah, I just thought we'll just we'll mix it up. Um, we'll we'll chat a lot of different people, and we'll get lots of different opinions and. See how it goes, and I mean, it's it's early days. I'm still getting used to uh, to putting a podcast together and how to record it and how to edit it together and stuff and how to upload it and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so it's nice just to just to chat to different folks. Uh, Tony says his first mini was an Airfix Diplodocus or a Diplodocus. As, as the, those in the America would say. Um, Nick says, right, got to go, lads, and that's as much love. See you all. Stay safe. Thanks, mate. I'll we'll catch you soon. Mike G says, house party two with a pajama jammy jam. <laughs> Robertson, got to go spend some time with the lady. Take care, mate. Thank you for dropping in. Much appreciated. Um, where... Um, Dan says, steel juggernaut is happening on my paint table right now. I almost painted my steel juggernaut tonight, mate, actually. That's my last, that's the last mini I've got left to paint. And that's, that's what will tip me over into my thousand points at the minute, mate. So the only reason I didn't is because when I come to prime it, I realised I'd made a little mistake when I glued it together. And I haven't quite lined up the pipe on the back properly. I don't know how on earth I've done that, whether it's slipped while the glue's been drying or something. So I'm going to have to try and take it apart again and uh, um, and just realign it. And if I kind of get it apart, I'll have to just 
sort of up and accept it, I suppose. But uh, yeah, so it just it just needs a bit of a tidy up. Um, that's the reason I'm not painting it tonight because it was going to be it. I can see it. It's right there beside me. Um, Probably Vision says we spent all our spare time in the lakes. He's been going for 35 years now. Couldn't ask for anything better. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just it's it's funny the stuff that you take for granted and like you know the stuff on your doorstep. I do I do wonder whether whether with when all of this kind of thing blows over a bit, if we start to appreciate like what's on our doorstep a little bit more, and you know, do people holiday in the UK a little bit more? What's the what's the tourist industry in the will the tourist industry in the UK take a bit of a an uplift? Do people start to kind of stay um, stay more local, and or do people just go back to how it always was and off to off to foreign destinations again? It'll be interesting to see what happens. That's for sure. Um, usually says always fancy buttons or centre parks. I missed out on that. I never went to centre parks when I was a kid, mate. It was it was way too expensive for my family. But we did go to Butlins when I was a kid, and that's kind of why I, I like always remember what it was like. Really, I always had good memories of it, which is why I was like saying to my wife, like let's you know, because my my wife's thought was like surely it's a it's a bit run down. It's been there forever, forever kind of thing. And I was like, well, I used to enjoy it when I was a kid. Like how bad can it be? So we went like last year. And there, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. And it was my wife's idea to go back again. Um, Mark has been quite being quiet while painting tricky bits is just like lowering the radio in the car when looking for parking. I think that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, I think it's exactly it. Um, where are we at? Cloud. Uh, oh, I, must have, I must have jumped off my chat a little bit there. Wow, you you folks have I tell you what you've really you've really kept me going tonight. The chat's been great. Uh, Red Rose Wargaming, nice to see you, Anna. How are you doing? It says I'm happy to DM a D and D one shot on Roll Twenty or something, which you could stream from your end if you fancied. I would love it if you do that. I'm not even bothered about streaming it. To be fair, I just I just love to have a go. I'd like to I, maybe maybe it's best you don't stream the first one anyway and see how it goes. But yeah, I, I would love to do something like that. Um, Flying Mammal says, "Just be yourself, Christian, and let Andy guide the conversation." Uh, Christian's not nervous, or he shouldn't be nervous. Should he have skipped over that bit? Our oh, house party isn't the greatest for live chatting. Very patchy and drops. Zoom is better. Um, all I was thinking made for uh, was for if, if people wanted to do it as a big group for the live. What was it called? The uh, like the live announcement stuff, the GW stuff. Um, I I normally just use Skype. I'm used to kind of doing Skype stuff, but um, yeah, Christian will be fine. He he won't be uh, any problem on the uh, on the on the on the on the podcast. We're just we're just having a natter, and to be honest, it'll just it's it. The idea is we're just we're just sitting chatting, just like two mates having a having a having a coffee and having a natter, and then basically the the com the conversation will just come from that. Um, Ruth's got a head off half the minis have no mold lines thanks for the company everyone thanks for dropping in Ruth it's been really really cool having you in really glad to see you and I hope you I hope you're feeling a little bit better as well because I know you weren't you weren't too well on Monday so yeah take care look after yourself um, where are we at um Let's scroll ahead because I've got no idea where the chat is up to now. Um, Dave, nice to see you, mate. Any news on GW factories and shipping restarting? No, none at all, mate. So essentially, it looks like what's happening in the UK is that we're probably going to be on lockdown for another three weeks, uh, which will mean GW will probably be uh, not shipping and uh, manufacturing for another three weeks. So yeah, I think it's going to be quite some time, mate. Maybe people might have to start buying miniatures from other companies. <laughs> Hell might freeze over. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how long GW can keep that up. Um, John says his painting wasn't as good back then, but didn't really matter so much. No, I don't think any of us really cared back then, do we? 
I don't think any of us were that fussed back then. So folks, all I'm doing now is I'm going back with the original highlight that I had before I put the wash on. And I'm just, I've really kind of thinned it down and I'm just trying to kind of lighten up certain, uh, certain areas of it now just to give it a bit of a, a focal point. Just to try and brighten it up a bit. I'm doing a thing where I turn the radio down when I'm looking for a parking space again now. Um, um, Scott says he's got his entire undead army to paint. Might actually get it primed and started and need to catch up with the slow grow. Do you know what it is, Scott? If you put your mind to it, you could have that finished in a week. I know what you're like when you come to painting, mate. You're, a, you're an absolute beast of a painter. Um, yeah. To be honest, if I had them, if I had the, um, if I had all the minis for my dwarf for me, I think I could smash it out as well. But I also feel bad like jumping ahead a bit with the slow grow as well seems i'm kind of running it i feel like i have to just try and stick to the stick to the um the schedule if you like but i guess it's uh trying times now it's certainly i certainly have got plenty of stuff to be painting though i don't need to uh i don't need to be apart from the fact that it's for my for my dwarf army i don't really need to be buying new stuff at the minute the only reason i'm wanting to buy new stuff is more just like new content and stuff for the channel, like, um, yeah. Well, I tell you what, I really, I really like this mini. It's not the, it's like the, I think what, because I'm not like, I've had them for a while and like they've just been kind of like lying around built and primed. It's nice just to paint them for the sake of painting them, really, just to get like a nice, uh, just to get some finished minis for no other reason than they'll look nice on the shelf <laughs> but yeah i'll get i'll get them on the table when code one comes because essentially with code one if it's uh what's it called if it um if i enjoy it i'll i'll kind of obviously I'll, I'll grow i'll grow the armies a little bit and it just so happens i've already got some panel stuff which is useful um just painting um robot butt cheeks now well, not a robot, but you know what I mean. Armoured. Armoured butt cheeks. Um, Chris, and thanks for starting the slow grow, Andy. Been wanting to play Kings of War for years, and the slow grow was the kick I needed. It was the kick I needed as well, mate, to be fair. Um, and it was because I, I asked somebody... I, I actually started a local Man Mantic... Um, the Northeast Mantic Gamers Group. I started it... To, to try and find other Mantic players in the Northeast. And unfortunately, because of the job I did, I was always aware and I couldn't even get to attend the club that I started. But the, the kickstart of it was it, it did get a lot of people together to start playing Mantic games in the Northeast, which we didn't have before. And now there's about 50 members in it and they regularly meet up to play like Kings of War and Vanguard and we're starting to see like Walking Dead and things picking up as well. Um, so it was the kickstart that the area needed for Mantic stuff. The store where the old player has now started stopping Mantic stuff, thanks to the um, that club meeting at that store. So we now have a northeast stockist for Mantic stuff, which we never had before either. Um, so I feel like I've kind of done my little bit to kind of get the community started in the area. And then when I had a free week once, when like I had some meetings that had been cancelled and I wasn't going to be aware, um, I asked somebody to give me a demo game of Kings of War because it was something I'd always been interested in but never had the chance to actually get a game of. So I, I got a demo game with a guy called Rad in the North East. And uh, he, uh, he gave me the game, the demo, and I was absolutely hooked from that first demo absolutely loved it and from then it was like right i need to i need to kind of motivate myself to paint the army now because it had always been something i fancied doing but never really had the motivation to to do a full army but then after actually playing the game and realizing just how good it was it was like right now now i'm motivated to do it so i decided to start the slow grow really just to kind of almost like i said before hold, like kind of hold me accountable to it um, get and get me keep me keep me going on it so that's what i did and thankfully there's a few other people have decided it was a good idea as well and 
Mantic seemed to think it was a good idea and they helped support it with some discount for people and stuff and it's just been it's been good fun it's nice to see they lots of it's, it's attracted lots of new people and it's attracted a lot of like current players who have been really supportive to those new players as well so all in all successful so far we're halfway through it um it's all looking pretty good i just need to remember to keep going in there and uh updating things and giving people a little nudge when it gets quiet in there and stuff but essentially that, that little community is kind of almost running itself really as people seem really engaged with it so yeah i'm happy with how that's panning out um where are we at Merfolk, Space Marine Assault Squad, back in 2001. Crabby Vision, distinct lack of 80s pop renditions tonight, mind. Speaking of which, um, I think it was it was Barry was asking about are we going to have more Elizabeth Shue on the po on the chat tonight <laughs> after last week. And I only remembered today that Elizabeth Shue was the girlfriend in um, Karate Kid with Ralph Macchio. I never, re never realised that until today, I don't think. So... Yeah, amazing. Uh, Creates his first meme was Giant Cy Cyclops made by Grenadier Miniatures. Wow, not a company I've heard of. <laughs> Claudia says, oh no, I've got to go to the bathroom and get a new beer. Uh, tell me if you talked about Dead Zone. <laughs> i tell you what, mate, tell me when you're back and I will talk about Dead Zone. Um, Robert says, here, Blackjack, nice niece. Sorry if I'm trending old, trending old info, but are you going to play a panel for Code 1? So, I don't think I've really talked about that, to be fair. Um, we talked a little bit about Code 1. Um, what I was saying was, I, I've got these minis for... I had it for Operation Ice Storm. So, and I've, ha I've had them built and primed for ages, so I thought I'd paint them up. They're all usable in, uh, in Code... Oh, for God's sake, man. <laughs> I really need to get better at this. They're all usable for Code 1. Um, so I thought I would paint these up first, because the other factions I've got are not usable in Code 1. So I thought I would use these as a bit of a bit of a test to get a bit of a colour scheme or something and uh, see how it goes. So yeah, I think I think I might play a panel, mate. I do like these minis. Um, they've got they've got like a nice aesthetic to them. I like the kind of the background law for panel. So yeah, I think I, I think I might give them a shot. So so far, folks, that's that's where I am with this one. Let's get it up there so you can have a look at it. Uh, where I'm kind of just. They look a bit stark at the minute, but they'll kind of they'll dull down a little bit. Um, I'm just kind of I like to put these. I always like the paint, like as I said before, with a bit of contrast, just a, a brightness. Because when they're on the tabletop and the and like they're out, they're out your line of sight a little bit. They tend to like just blend in a little bit if you've got really kind of sort of nice subtle blends. So yeah. I'm kind of happy with that. Obviously, with the by the time I do the base and stuff, that'll kind of brighten some of that up. Uh, in fact, before I go on and do more blue, I'll do a little bit of a bit of stuff on here as well that I want to add to it, so you can kind of see how it's brightening up. So we're going to put a touch of Mephiston red. And the Mephiston red. I'll just put some on my, on my palette here. So the Mephiston red is just to to, to pick out a couple of kind of um, just spots on his legs. So where he's got these in his thighs. Let me see them on screen first. Just gonna just dot those in. Just to kind of give a little bit of, little bit of something. Um, let's see on the back, I need to pick out. I need to try and I'm not going to balls them up trying to do the eyes. That's for sure. Doesn't need me to screw that up. That's <laughs> nobody's going to see, nobody's going to see the eyes on that. Are they? Let's be honest. Um, kidding myself if I think they are. Now let me just just highlight that around the around the neck a little bit. Highlight around there. Um, yeah. Um, where are we up to? 
Kelly, is it bad I'm just drinking and watching instead of painting, drinking and watching? It's, it's never bad. Nobody should ever be worried about what they're doing. You should just, the idea is just to kind of hang out and chill. I'm just here painting some minis. If you all want to come and join me, then that's awesome. Kelly says, what color is on this mini? So that, that light blue that I'm using now is a, a Temple Guard blue from Citadel. And it's over a base of Canto blue. Um, and I'm just progressively like kind of just like lightening it, lightening it up and lightening it up. And the, the gun so far, it's not finished, but the gun so far has been um, based with like a, a light grey and then a black GW, um, the black, what's it called, the contrast paint over the top. So, um, yeah, I think what I'll do actually, rather than keep going and, and keep highlighting the other blues, I think I'll crack on a little bit with this one just to, uh, just to try and see if we can get one finished. Um... Luke said he's decided to start Prometheus, one of his favourite minis. Nice, mate. Skull Munch, even all, what are we all hoping for on GW's Twitch reveal? We were just briefly chatting about that before, mate. I'm just hoping for something interesting, if I'm completely honest. It's um, the, the last couple of streams have been not disappointing, I would say, because if you're a fan of the GW stuff, I'm sure you've been kind of pleased with it, but... It's been nothing, like, they, they hyped it up to be the biggest ever, if you like. And, and I was kind of hoping for big news. And, and I've been a little bit disappointed that it's just been relatively kind of standard, really, of just like, oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of more of the same stuff, really. However, what I would say is that they've not talked very much about 40k stuff at all um so oops i'm assuming this there is more for 40k coming because they've almost kind of avoided like that um, um skull munch hoping for more middle earth stuff yeah skull munch is banging to his middle earth stuff at the minute i assume you've been over on the other chat mate have you with the with the guys from top table that's the seems to be the place to be at the minute for uh for Middle Earth stuff, it's uh, yeah, not really my bag, mate. But uh, I'm glad those guys seem to be uh, focusing, focusing on it. Really, it's, it seems it seems to be when they they get their biggest views and stuff is when they're just focusing on Middle Earth. Um, so it seems to be doing well for them as a channel. Um, where are we at? Deep red, right, bro, gotta love you and leave you. Otherwise, I'll get these dark elves finished and have sort of up here tomorrow. Yeah, you gotta space these things out, mate, haven't you? That's for sure. Take care, mate. Nice to see you. And um, Tony, Batman, Harley, Gordon, and the bat single all built. A bit more tidy and a tiny bit of green stuff needed. The, those sculpts are amazing, mate. They are very, very nice. Um, I'd like to know what you think when you eventually get your first games in, mate. I'd love to know what you think of it. Because I've never played the Batman game. So I can't really, uh, I couldn't tell you like what if 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 one sort of uh, edition is better than another edition, if you like. Because I think this is third edition now, isn't it? But um, I'd love to know whether the minis basically live up to the, or whether the game lives up to the quality of the minis. That would be uh, good to hear, mate. Steve says he's out there. He's got to work in the morning. Yeah, uh, thanks, mate. Says great screen. Take care, mate. Hope you're really well. Nice to see you, Steve Bonner, as well. How are you doing, mate? Um, <laughs> Steve's in armoured butt cheeks. Wow, is that a time? 11 o'clock now as well. Um, where are we at? Um, well, go on, let's just dive in somewhere. Uh, dang robot butt cheeks half pissed <laughs> that's very funny uh, Scott said I tend to be very aggressive player when I play which army would be a good start for in Infinity I have no idea mate I'm not an aggressive player uh, <laughs> so um, let me find out for you I'll do some digging Apex Cookies nice to see you he says you still play Gears of War board game I do still play Gears of War board game I, t I tend to only ever really play it solo Um but yeah, it's a it's a game uh, a game I thoroughly enjoy. How about yourself? Are you playing it at the moment? Especially with it being solo, are you managing to get some uh, some solo gaming in? Uh, 
some gaming in, but with it being solo rather, I should say. Um, Kelly says, is that an artist opus brush? All those good brushes? Yes, so I have um, a few different artist opus brushes. I've got these, the Series S ones, which are the ones with the, well, if I can get it on camera, that would be very helpful, wouldn't it? The Series S ones, which have the shorter uh, ends on them. And I have the, C uh, sorry, the, they got the, not the standard ones and the Series M's, which have the shorter bristles on them as well. And I've got a few different sizes, everything from triple zeros up to threes. And I've also got the dry brush ones as well, which are over there, but I'm, I'm not doing a lot of dry brushing tonight. Um, and yes, I like them. Um, yeah, I, I do. I like, I like them very much. Since I was just saying earlier on the stream, since I bought them, I've not purchased any more brushes since then. Um, Steve, so you might have to double check the slow grow. I need the book first. The, um, slow, the Kings of War rules were free today, mate. You can, you can pick the rules up for free now. Uh, Steve says, uh, Andy, you need to mark a spot on the table where you put your hand like they do on stage. Do you know what it is, mate? I used to do that and I still end up missing it as well. To be honest, I even marked out a little square on my paper as well. So I know I should be in there. But what happens is I just get carried away and I completely forget about it. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm just going to enjoy it. <laughs> it is what it is, mate. Um, ain't nobody coming in for the quality of my painting anyway. So... I'm just hoping that my my um, my witty banter more than makes up for it. Uh, where else we at? Daniel Engel says, "Looks great." Reminds me of the dude from that Apple Seed anime. Do you know what it is, mate? Like, I've always kind of enjoyed anime stuff, like purely from the aesthetic. Half the time, the stories are lost on me and things, but I'm a big fan of things like uh, like Akira and Ghost in the Shell, like the more popular ones. Um, Ex Machina or Ex Machina, whatever it's called, um, that kind of stuff. I also really like Death Note as well. Um, so that that sort of um, what's the word I'm looking for? That that aesthetic, if you like, is kind of right up my street, really. As, as I mentioned, if you have you see the video about doing my bit studio tour over, oh, so you can see over that way is all of my kind of infinity pictures and stuff that I've got up. Just because I, I absolutely love that like aesthetic, um, really kind of colourful sci-fi, if you like. Um, yeah, I just I love the colours, mate. Um, Tony says, funny looking game store is Mantic Premium Store now, thanks to the slow grow, and uh, maybe an unguarded comment from me. <laughs> yes, mate. There's a uh, Clive's been doing a good job actually of getting around some of those stores. I think after I'd complete, I think if you remember in in the slow grow in in the Facebook group, I was asking about like why why does nowhere have Mantic stuff in stock, and I think he, he he basically got in touch with me after that, and we had a bit of a chat about stuff, and then he, he, since then they started up them kind of premium stores. So I'd like to think that between us we've all had a little bit of a hand in that. Busy saying when did the, when you did the airbrush stage did you vent outdoors? I tried to but still end up with coloured bogies even with a mask. I don't wear a mask, mate. I, I've got a, like a, what do you call it? Like a airbrush hood. And I, I, I vent it indoors as well, mate. Um, I don't do it that much airbrushing that I kind of worry about it, really, if I'm honest. Um, I probably should still have a mask, but I don't. So, yeah. Um, Kelly's going back for a beer downstairs. Um, Um, Crabby Vision, it's been shocking so far from a 40k perspective, considering how they pitched it. That's exactly where I am, mate. That's exactly where I am. Um, is that I, I think that I can only expect that they've got big things to come from 40k. Because I, I had a ticket for the Adepticon um, reveals for when I was out in Adepticon. And um, that, that ticket was for a two-hour... Um, a two-hour, uh, like, what's it called again? Not a convention, like a seminar, sorry. It was for a two-hour seminar. And I don't think, I know they're having a bit of banter and stuff on the, excuse me, on the live streams, but I don't think that they've, they've given us enough stuff that would have dragged that out for two hours in, in a room full of people. So I think I'm going to do, I'm going to put this on top of the court when I paint the base. Um just so I can make sure I get right round it. 
Um, so I, I've got a feeling that there is, there's much more to come. I think that it's... Uh, that's the point of it, I think. I think, I think there's definitely more 40k to come because there's, there's been so little 40k. Like the only things they've revealed have been the... Um, the psychic awakening stuff, and that actually even one of those, one of those psychic awakening things, said it was um, it was going to be in in white dwarf, which makes me think they're kind of accelerating, getting through that, potentially ready for, for ninth edition, and and I know it's just rumors and stuff like that, but I mean this whole, this whole coronavirus thing must have like, must have completely knocked knocked their plans because there's no way they're going to be launching. Um, ninth edition at this time while we're all in lockdown and nobody can play it and they're not they their stores are not open and they're not shipping and all that kind of stuff. So I'm wondering whether they've been dragging this out as long as they can to try and see if there's any kind of green shoots of of an announcement about when things can get back to normal. And I'm wondering if that's why they like they they're dragging it out and making that information seem more important than it actually is for some of that like some of the stuff they're talking about like it really is like pulling teeth for it, really. So I've got a lot of sympathy with them. It's completely me messed up their business plans, I think. But, yeah, no doubt we'll, we'll have to wait and see, I think. But, yeah, so yeah, this is coming along anyway. It starts to pull it together once the base starts to get a bit of colour to it. I'll paint them bits at the, bite, the, the back of the pipes and stuff like that as well. But, um, yeah, we're getting there, folks. We're getting there. Um, Warwick Dark Edge has finally caught a stream as it was live and not after it was over. Nice to see you, mate. Thank you very much for popping in. Much appreciated. Um, School motion, yeah, over at Tabletop. Uh, stream was really in Middle Earth. Hate it when the two live streams clash. Yeah, well, we've got completely different subjects, to be honest, mate. So I don't really think we're kind of, we're not really stealing the same, uh, the same folks from each other kind of thing. It's like, when when they do their um their Middle Earth stuff, ninety nine percent of my kind of viewers are not really Middle Earth players, so so I apologise for you, mate. But um, at least they're both available for you to catch up on at a different time as well. So you've got twice twice the stuff to watch that way. Um, means you can uh, twice twice the streams, twice the fun. Was was Jay on the stream as well, mate, or was it just um, was it just um, Steve and um, Ben. It's Jay's, Jay's hardly ever on there these days. I don't think he's as Middle Earth focused as the other two guys are. And then obviously Lee's gone off and doing his own thing now, isn't he? He's got his Tabletop Magpie channel. Um, so, yeah, interesting stuff. Uh Bazza's in as well. Nice to see you, Bazza. How are you doing, mate? Um, Steve's saying, yeah, Andy, they're teasing all the Adepticon reviews due to current climate. I think, yeah, they really are dragging out. Terry says, bedtime for him, mate. Thanks for mega amounts of inspiration. Stay stiff. I hope you're well, mate. I hope the um, the eye operation thing has gone all right as well, and I hope yeah, you're not feeling too bad, mate. Take care, buddy, and, and thanks for your donation tonight as well. And um, Kelly's saying, uh, back. Is it this is better than go to the pub. Don't have to worry about getting home. <laughs> yeah, me too. Don't have to drive anywhere. Just I'm just sitting here and have a beer and hang out and paint. Baz said he's done his painting for the night. He's put on some Black Legion armor. Nice, mate. And Claudio says it only took me it only took me two comments to come back. <laughs> just kidding. Don't want to spam and stress out. Uh, no, I tell you what is, mate. You you you're here. You you um you're supporting me. I'm going to talk about Dead Zone as well. So Dead Zone is a game. That I, um, I remember picking it up a long, long time ago. I picked it up in first edition, and I mainly for the terrain, I think, if I remember right. But I really, I really liked it. I liked the idea of playing on the mat. I like uh, with the cubes rather. I liked the idea that it wasn't, um, it, it like it wasn't like measuring for stuff. It was um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it was cubes, sorry. Yeah, so it was on cubes. I like that fact. It was, um, excuse me, because I can't talk and shake. Um, yeah, I like, I like the fact it was on cubes. I like, I like the way the line of sight stuff worked. It was just a really straightforward 
uh, interesting game. Uh, however, first edition was quite, there was quite a lot of um, cards and stuff like that I seem to remember in first edition, which made it a little bit more complex. So when second edition came out, I really like when they started to include the, uh, the command dice stuff. It really changed things up. Um, and the problem I had was I, I just never, I, I never had anybody to play it with. And I, I never painted my stuff, so I never put it on the channel or anything like that, the stuff that I had. And a lot of my stuff I had was all um, the first edition stuff. But now, like, things are changing now. It's like, it feels like it's getting a bit of a second wind at the minute. I feel like Manic have done a great job while we've been in this lockdown of keeping the community supported and, um, and like, sort of giving out free rules for things, giving out... Um... Claudio, thank you very much, buddy. That's very kind. Uh, I, I, I didn't talk about Dead Zone for that, you know. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so I think Manic have been doing a really good job of um, of keeping the community entertained and putting out lots of single player stuff like solo player rules, releasing free rules for things, doing videos for the community. And I just, I feel at the minute, like, like it feels like, I mean, I know they're a business, obviously, and they're trying to get customers and stuff. But I really feel like they have gone. They've, they've done a lot to engage the community, and I think they're going to come out of this lockdown stuff with um with, with a lot of good praise. And I think Dead Zone is one of them games that absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, de deserves more more love and attention, and it, and it deserves a little bit more kind of focus on it. So now now I'm now I'm doing this full time now. Excuse me while I'm reaching across for paints here. Now I'm doing this full time now. I've got time to kind of dedicate to some of those games because of what I was talking about on the live stream on Monday as well. The fact that the way I'm the way I'm doing this channel, I'm not focused upon like views. I'm not I'm not trying to get like ten thousand views from every video to try and get a lot of uh, ad revenue. I'm trying to monetize my channel through a different uh, different way. So because of that, I can focus on those games that maybe don't get a lot of views on YouTube but absolutely do deserve to get a little bit more like notice and stuff. And I think Dead Zone is one of those games, so I fully intend to start talking about it more. I don't know enough about it at the minute to talk with any kind of confidence about tactics and about what's the best factions and all that kind of stuff. But that doesn't mean that over time um, that won't change. And, it, and it's something I'm kind of like, it's something I'm really... Like it's, it's took me a while to kind of get my head around the best way to run this channel and that's why it took me a while to, do, to be able to kind of commit to going full full time with it. But almost champion, championing some of those games that don't really get the love on YouTube because every, everybody's out there just looking for views basically. Like every, everybody's just trying to get as many, as many views as possible. But there's, as they say, there's more than, more than one way to skin a cat kind of thing and, and I feel like I've just like stumbled upon something that is like... It's perfect to be able to like give games like Burrows and Badgers and and that kind of stuff and Dead Zone and to give those games a platform to get to get people to see them without being like without thinking oh I'm going to do this video and it's it's going to be a waste of time and it won't get enough views and all that kind of stuff I just it's so freeing to have community support that that allows me to to to. To play the games I want to play and to focus on the stuff that might not be like it, that it might not be 40k kind of levels of, of views and might not be um like to most like people who have YouTube channels they, they probably wouldn't waste their time on it because they'll think well it's I'm not seeing the return on my efforts but my, my efforts are not for views they're for, they're for the for community and that's why that's why you'll start to see things like dead zone so I'm really looking forward to it mate I'll be I'll be uh, asking you for tips, mate, on what I should, well, how I should, how I should be doing stuff. Um, where were I? G. Daddy saying he's working, watching, painting his custom booster blaster. Nice, mate. I, I don't even know what that's for. It sounds kind of forty k. I've got no idea if it is. Uh, Kelly saying got to work on some BattleTech minis. Uh, Curita Mex in pro process of painting. Nice. Uh, Dave says, if you were Ferrari, would you reveal your brand, new customer sports car right, model right now? I think this is the problem. I don't think anybody um, would, is going to be revealing anything like that. 
I've, I've seen it from YouTube in the fact that like my ad revenue, so my, my views are up, I'm getting more views than I've ever had, I'm getting more uh, watch time than I've ever had, and my ad revenues drop through the, through the floor. Like I'm, I'm, I'm making less money from ad revenue because basically what's happening is nobody's, nobody's advertising. So all the movies that normally advertise on YouTube to get you to go to the cinema, none of them are spending any money. They've all pulled their movies. All the um, like new products that are coming out and stuff, people are like not, not risking it at the minute. They're not launching anything new. When it comes to the games companies at the minute, nobody's really launching anything new unless they've got no choice and it was already in the plan kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a funny time. It, it leaves me with not a lot of new stuff to talk about, which is kind of unusual. And it also leaves me with um, like <laughs> less money in the bank, if you like. So yeah, Skullmonster says, just Stephen Ben for Middle Earth Streams. Jay's been doing the ordinary live streams though. Yeah, I caught the one he was on the other week. Um, I think he's just not, Middle Earth's not his bag at the minute as he's playing a lot of, um, playing a lot of Legion. He's playing a lot of, um, Marvel, that kind of stuff these days. Um, I think he's, uh, he's probably a bit burnt out, I think, on Middle Earth stuff, but the cha the channel's gone very, very Middle Earth heavy now, hasn't it? Um, Murphic Bear says, which paintbrushes would you recommend? Um, I, I like the Art of Sopers ones, I'll be perfectly honest. Um, I, f I find them really, I find them really good to use. They're comfortable in my hand. They go back to a point. They clean up well. They don't split. Or the ones I've got have not split. Um, I found them really good. I've all I also use or I have in the past used um, these ones, which are Windsor and Newton Series Sevens. They've always stayed nice. This one's really old, and I like it with the shorter the shorter um, point for certain jobs. I've got old Citadel paints, uh, old Citadel brushes. For like, for bits of dry brushes and things like that. Um, to be honest, I I would say Rosemary and Co make good brushes. They're they're a good company. Um, but personally, I use the Artis Opus ones because I, I just I find that the um, they're really comfy. They've kept their points. They're a bit more expensive, but but then they, they've lasted probably twice as long as other brushes I've bought in the past. So I think they're worth their money. To be fair. Um, Busy saying, I think they're getting a the point now that GW will start production again pretty soon. The problem is, mate, it's they've kind of, they've almost painted themselves into a corner because they said they were shutting this down to keep their staff safe. And if they then say, "I want you all back at work now," because we're not making any money, I think it becomes a little bit hypocritical. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a funny one. So I'm not sure what they'll do. Um, they've got to be careful how they handle that one, really, because it, it's all right, kind of saying we're in this to keep all of our, all of our, um, all of our staff safe, but then they can't turn around and go, right, that's it, profits are down, get back to work. I don't care that you, I don't care we're still on lockdown, you know, essential kind of thing. So it's going to be really, uh, it's going to be interesting. Part of me um, wonders whether it's uh, whether there's anything a bit more cynical in it, and that actually by stopping production, can they uh, can they claim money from the government and stuff like that to to pay for pay for workers? Is it a money saving thing? Or maybe I'm just being maybe I'm just being overly cynical. Uh, who knows? I'm sure there's I'm sure there's some business reasons in that because they they jumped pretty early into locking things down. When people like Warlord and, and Mantic have managed to keep it going with, by putting them, um, I mean obviously their production's on a much smaller scale so they have a lot less people around, but Mantic put out a really good email the other day I thought, or, or I think it might have been on, the, on their blog or something like that, but they put out a really good note about how they were handling stuff um, in the lockdown and about how they've got people working but they're like, they've got zones in their warehouse where like, People put things into this zone and then somebody else comes across and picks it up when there's nobody else there and they're putting the, anything that's got to go out for shipping is going into a zone so when the post guys come and pick it up, they don't have to interact with anybody. I thought it was a really it was a really thoughtful kind of piece of piece of information really that just says like look, we are still up and running. 
but we can only do this because because we've got a nice big warehouse and we're, and we're keeping our numbers down in there really so I thought it was really interesting to read that however I do appreciate every single person that's still getting up and out getting out of bed and going to work every day at the minute because I'll tell you what it would be a very different place if a lot of the the places that like people who work in supermarkets and post people and people who are doing deliveries and all that kind of stuff or people who work in factories and you know I don't even know where to stop really when you start listing off all the people but it's uh it's unbelievable um where are we at um beauty saying going by what's happening in Spain I think GW has started production oh yeah um it depends me because like I think we're still another three weeks away from anything changing in the UK. I think we're, st we're still a bit of a distance away. And I know you're seeing things are starting to happen in Spain, but you've been on lockdown a bit longer than us as well. Um, Craig said he got in there. Claudius is just fitting to up the pledge now. Oh, I appreciate that, mate. No, it's... Like I say, it's... Um, it's just, it's, it's just honestly, it's, it, it blows me away the amount of support and stuff that that people have shown me and I, and I think you were in at the start when I was talking about like another channel who's who's trying to kind of get ready to go full-time with his stuff as well and some uh, a very small minority like maybe one person kind of just saying like you know like like um like basically and nah, now that's it I've, I've had enough basically now you're asking for money it's uh like I've had enough. I don't. I didn't like your stuff anyway, kind of thing. And I just, it's, it's a shame that that's, it, that that kind of stuff basically happens, really. Um, and it has, but it hasn't happened for me. I've just got nothing but uh, really supportive people around me. I think. Um, Craig says, got in the dead zone because of the small play area and low model count. Been playing for a few years and now. My favorite game, the small, the small play area. Actually, I should, that was one of the things I was trying. I was trying to remember to mention when I was talking about while I'm painting there, butt cheeks again now. Uh, while I was talking about the, the, the mat, I love the fact it's just a two by two area. Like there's not enough games really that play on that very small um, surface. And to be honest, I, I, I think Dead Zone was probably ahead of its time. If Dead Zone had been released now, I think it might get a bit of a different reception, but it's almost like it's it's almost like it's been around for a while. Some of the minis for Dead Zone are not the best, if I'm perfectly honest, because they were older sculpts. When Mantic were do, using more of their kind of their weird, kind of rustic type stuff and things, and some of them are not the best fits. So I think if like if it if it had, if it had come out now, I think it might get a very very different reception because it, it it feels like it's the right game for the way the the way the market is at the moment, but it's just not getting the love and attention that it deserves. And to be honest, it's not that long ago it felt like it was on its way out. I think people like Andy Sharp have really helped Mantic. To kind of keep that going, um, and people like Kieran with the, with the summer campaigns and stuff, doing the uh, doing all of the summer campaign stuff for Mantic. It's it's great to see that it's um, it's still there and fighting really, and it's nice that there's a new a new faction coming this summer or a sub faction. It's nice to see that they're they're, they're going to sort of give it the support it deserves really. Um, so yeah, if I if I can do my little bit. For the dead zone community to kind of give it a little bit more visible visibility online and maybe try and because one of the one of the things with my with my community if you like or this community i should say it's not necessarily mine is that people don't come to me for one particular game they, they, they tend to come because they like lots of different games and they like to hear about new games so for all i might not have as many subscribers as some other channels i have a i have a subscriber base that are open to hearing about new stuff and that's kind of um, that's where this kind of stuff can do really well, like introducing new games to people. So yeah, I'm uh, definitely ready for that, mate. Definitely ready to do something with that. Um, where are we up to? I'm kind of I'm I'm zoning out now, really. I apologise. I'm kind of painting and just zoning out. Um, Crabby Vision saying, doesn't a lot of GW stuff come from China now? I'd imagine there are limitations on international shipping. To be honest, mate, the only thing that comes from China I've heard is uh, Fred Inc. just to subscribe. Thank you, Fred Inc. Um, 
one of the things I've heard from uh, that comes from China is just some of their terrain, mate. Um, pretty much all of their miniatures are made in the UK now. So um, anything that's like this standard kind of um, sculpted mini stuff and the Forge World stuff is all produced in the UK. They've got very little Chinese production these days. So it's one of the reasons why um, why they're a bit more expensive. It's because they, they have all in-house um, manufacturing and it's all in the UK and obviously wages are, they've got to pay for they've got to pay wages for all of them they've got to uh, they've got to pay overheads they've got to pay for the factory they've got to pay for HR they've got to pay for all the support staff and occupational health and holiday pay and pensions and all that kind of stuff really like it's it's easily overlooked a little bit and I think people sometimes forget that GW like um technically are quite an ethical company to to be buying from because of the way they treat their staff like when it comes to physical like the standards they've got in place like the um obviously like working laws are very different in the uk as the, to they are in the out in the far east and you can obviously get you can obviously get things made very cheaply in the far east because of that because of the different standards so yeah most of it's made in the uk now mate um Claudio, Dread Zone's a bit crazy, as the cubes are the best thing, but also the worst to get people in the game. It's alienating. Once you try, you love it. Thomas from Tabletop Basement got many new gamers, many new Germans now. Yeah, it's um, it it looks confusing at first, isn't it? Because it, like, people instantly go, "What? Like, what? There's no, there's no ruler. You don't measure. How the hell does that work?" Um. <laughs> Mark was saying, how do you skin a cat? <laughs> There's more than one way to do it, mate. Um, Steven says, would love to hear more Mantic systems. I'd be following long, mate. I will be following long, mate. Been a long time since I played Dreadball. Bonner Corp needs a new sponsor and upgrade kit. To be fair, and, and this is uh, all credit to Mantic as well, to be fair, when I announced on Monday I was going um, full-time with the channel, um, the, the guy, uh, Martin at Mantic, dropped me a message the next morning saying congratulations, and as soon as he's back to work, like let's have a let's have a catch up and let's have a chat. So I am, um, like to be fair, I'm. I said I, I'm not. I'm obviously not taking any payments or anything from companies. But if they want to send me stuff to support the channel, like for, like um, for, from like starter boxes and things like that, or stuff that they that stuff they want they want me to unbox or to review. Obviously, I'm open to that stuff because that's what keeps the channel going and it keeps it interesting for you folks. But yeah, I mean they reached out straight away really and and there was a nice tweet as well like saying like um big things coming and uh like congratulations and all that kind of stuff it, it it's it was really it was really nice to have that message from them the next morning to be fair um so yeah so there's there'll definitely be mantic stuff coming out without a shadow of a doubt i've all, i've always played mantic game stuff um it's like i'm not i'm not it's not like i'm putting it on the channel just because they got in touch with me it's um I started with Walking Dead. Do you know what I mean? I've had Vanguard on the channel and stuff. I'm doing the Kings of War stuff at the minute, so yeah, it's 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 nice to nice to be appreciated by the company as well. Yeah, I really I really do appreciate that reaching out. Um Claudio. Um where are we at? Let's just jump off. Claudio, uh, finished his ear wing. Really pleased how it turned out. Nice mate. I want to see them pictures. Um, Dan saying, been great to hang out, definitely try and catch these more, watch for lots of picks in the slow grow. I look forward to it, mate. Yeah, it's nice just to kind of kill some time. Didn't realise it's half eleven, we've been going for like three hours. But there's 40 of you in the chat still, I'm quite happy to keep going. Um, Mark was saying his birthday is coming up next week, he gives his wife a short list of games and comics. Excited to see what she picked. Oh, I tell you what, mate, after you, after you find out what you got, you'll have to tell me what was on your short list. Um, Steve says, do a throwback on the older systems, I always do live sitting paints. As I've caught myself painting along. Yeah, some of the older systems as well, mate. I mean, if just because they're not new doesn't mean they're not new to people. That like, like people who've never played them before, if you like, it doesn't mean that they're not new to them. So, um, Claudius is he's got his job till October, so I'm I'm in for the mug. After that, I have to see where my money goes. I might have to drop down again. Until then, go buy your Porsche out of my money. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Uh, no, I really appreciate that, mate. But like, honestly, if you only ever pledge what you can afford, certainly. 
John Triplo, how are you doing, John Triplo? I have not seen you in a long, long time. So John used to go to the gaming group, which was the first ever gaming group that I ever went to. Nice to see you, John. It says, uh, Warwick, thank you for subscribing. Um, he says, have you tried Beast Grave? I'm toying with picking it up, but I'm not sure if it'll be my bag. I have, I have got Beast, Beast Grave, mate. That's probably something else I can put on the channel as well, to be fair. I've got Beast Grave. Um, I was a big fan of Shade Spire. There was a few sort of quirks and sort of bits in it that were a bit clunky. I think GW were getting their head around writing really succinct cards um, that didn't kind of contradict each other. They've got a lot better at that now. And this is now Beast Graves, the third edition of Warhammer Underworlds. Um, it runs really smooth. And the best bit about it is in Beast Grave is now if you buy a Warband, um, it comes with a playable card pack as well. The older systems in, in Seasons 1 and Seasons 2 didn't come with like a proper full deck. You had to buy other packs to try and make up decks and stuff or use the starter packs to make up decks. Um, price point wise, it, I think I think it's really good value for money. I did a video recently about um, best games, miniatures games for new players or for beginners and Beast Grave was, was one of the ones I recommended in there, mate. So yeah, I, if you're on the fence about it, mate, it, it's, a, it's a card game, to be fair, with miniatures. Um, so if you're not into card games, Avoid it like the plague because the cards are the key mechanic of the game, really. If you're not into card games, like you don't like kind of. Um, I was going to say if you don't like magic, but the difference is I, I'm not a big fan of deck building, but I quite enjoy card games. And because with the new season, where when you buy a faction, it comes with a, with a playable deck. If you're just playing casually, you don't have to worry about the deck building side. Where in the past, deck building was was a was a key component of it. So yeah, that's that's my thoughts, mate. I, I'd recommend it personally. Um, Clarice and hopes Dead Zone will benefit from the surge of Kings of War three and Vanguard. Get some funding from from Mantic for keep new things. Yeah, and Andy Sharp is the man, always hard work, and yeah, he's he's, he's really has done a good job for, for um and, and he, I know he does I know he doesn't work for Mantic. He's kind of doing that off his own back. Maybe one day. Who knows? I mean, I know he's a doctor, so he might not be ready to give up his uh, medical career to work for Mantic. But I, I know he's, I know he's massively appreciated by the guys there. Um, where's that? It's just jumped for top of my screen there. Steve, see in the chat, make me want to break up my dead zone in Dreadball. I was playing Dreadball last night, mate, with my wife. We played Dreadball together for the first time on uh, on Sunday, and I had a second game of it last night. I really enjoyed it, mate. So, yeah, so Dreadball will be making an appearance as well. Um, no doubt. Um, where else are we? Joe Q's saying here and other half love it, but you, you need to like the card element. Yeah, that's kind of what I was uh, what I was just getting at, really. Stacey's could do with more Forge Fathers. Krabby's saying the minis are, are, but I'm sure the books and instructions and stuff come from China. Could be wrong, though. Um, they might do, mate. Yeah, they might do the, the printed stuff. Miniatures are certainly UK, but yeah, I would imagine they might still be printing out in the Far East. Um, where Busey's saying, trust me, I didn't want to go back to work, but it's hard not to when they allow non-essential workers back to work. Yeah, and, and that's the difference. I, I think in the UK, it's still probably going to be another three weeks because I think, so have they, have they opened schools up again yet, mate, in Spain? Has that, has that happened as well? Because I think until you can get kids back to school, and especially with the six weeks summer six weeks holidays coming up unless you can get kids back to school it's it's quite tying for parents not being able to go to work so um yeah it's john saying he's not not opposed to the card element i think in that case mate beast grave is is probably not a bad bet because like i say that the card the, the deck building element is less of a problem in this third third season now uh, Claudio saying, great news, Martin's such a nice guy. Yeah, I've met Martin a few times, and to be fair, we'd we'd planned to get together at Adepticon and, and have a good chat and a good catch-up, because I used to go to Mantic quite often in the past, but then essentially what happened was I basically just ran out of, uh, like, sort of holidays to use from work, so I was having to use holidays up to go down to Nottingham to Mantic, and essentially as, as the year went on, as it got later and later in the year, I'd, I'd use holidays up for, like, family holidays and things. And I didn't have any spare time to go down to Manic and chat to the guys. So unfortunately, things just kind of, you know, you kind of drift away a little bit. But Martin's always been really good with me. And like I say, we were 
and Rob, and Rob as well, to be fair as well. I shouldn't I shouldn't miss Rob out. Um, and uh, yeah, we had planned to get together at, at Adepticon, but obviously obviously wasn't wasn't to be. But yeah, it was re it was really nice of him to to reach out. It's it's nice to get a message like that. Uh, I consider the guy a friend as well, really. But it was it was definitely from like from a from a business side of things was the, was the congratulations and I, and I appreciate that. Um, John seen a lot of light in Dead Zone. He has the same three dice mechanic as Dreadball. It does me, and I forgot I forgot about that actually until you mentioned it. Um, I, I quite like that three dice mechanic. I think we were chatting about things that we were changing games in the Facebook group last week. And one of the things I really like about some of the games in, that Mantic do is that basically they, they add and take away dice to change the likelihood that something happens as opposed to um, changing the stats the way like say Age of Sigmar does or something. So rather than changing, like rather than saying oh, it, it, it was a 3 plus, now it's a 4 plus kind of thing. Rather than doing that, it means your stats always change. They always stay the same, but your um, the amount of dice that you roll is what brings in the variance, and that and that gives you, like purely from a, like a maths point of view, it gives you such a uh, more variance in what you can do rather than it just being a one in six chance all the time. Um, it, it really opens up the differences. Um, Luke's saying not going anywhere. He's feeling motivated. I think this might be the latest stream I've ever done. John saying love the models for a few factions. Might as well give it a spin. It's to be honest, mate. It's it's not it's not as it's not as sorry. I'll say that again. It's not as expensive as some games. So actually, from from kind of getting a getting a foot in the door, it's not too bad. If you were just wanting to kind of, there's also one called um, Dreadfane, which is like a kind of like a, a a streamlined version. So if you were just wanting to kind of play like. With a mate or something like that, or with the kids or something along them lines, um, the Dreadfane version's not a bad, like sort of sort of like slim down version of it. But what I would say, I think it's only like ten quid cheaper at full price. You're better off probably spending the extra tenner and getting the full version. Um, he's saying he's good, mate. Looking well, feeling well, mate. I've got a lot less hair <laughs> than the last time we saw each other, but uh, yeah, I'm not too bad at all, mate. Thanks very much. Um, Bit of chat. Tony saying we're, we're an eclectic bunch. Eclectic is a very nice way of putting it, mate. We are an eclectic bunch. Um, um, Kelly saying card game with miniatures sounds like every FFG mini game. I always say like like um, Shadow Shadow Spear and um, uh, Beast Grave and stuff are very much definitely um, card games with with miniatures as opposed to miniatures games with cards. Because essentially those like those miniatures, they're just tokens on the board, really. And and I don't mean that in a bad way. Like it's it's fine. It's just that it's very it's very much a card driven game. The cards are important. Like it's uh, like this you, you can't you can't build it um you can't build a warband, your warbands are fixed. So it's not like you can kind of um sort of sort of change like um like build a warband to to change the game up what you've got to what you've got it's it's changing your deck is what changes the game up so um Lucy saying no the schools are still closed i wonder how that's working i mean i mean to be honest mate for you to get back to work obviously from a financial point of view it's it's fantastic mate and and if people can work and it's safe to work then that's absolutely great mate get, get people back to work and stuff but I find the fact that if schools are still closed, it must be quite, it must be quite tough to get to get like a lot of people back to work quickly when essentially they've they've got to stay home with kids and things. But obviously that's a, I suppose any anybody getting getting some people back to work is better than having nobody at work. Tony said he's heading off now. Been a fab hobby session. Get a snap of his mini before before I hit the hair. Thanks, mate. Uh, nice to see you, and we'll catch up soon. Um, and yeah, that goes for anybody. If anybody that's been sitting painting in the chat tonight. And you want to put a, a, pitch, a pick up on the Facebook group, show everybody what you've been painting tonight, kind of uh, just to keep the motivation up. The idea with this is just like, just it's just hanging out really. Like these are just meant to be chill sessions. Like if you're in two minds about picking up the brushes and you maybe you're a bit low in motivation, you don't really fancy it and stuff. These are just a little nudge. They're a nudge for me to get me painting. To be fair, but they're a nudge for you as well, just to say 
oh, you know what, I, I, I will have half an hour or, or I, I will kind of do it for a bit. Um, Steve's saying, is there an update pack for Dread Ball or, De or Dead Zone or, and Dead Zone or new starters? There's no update packs, mate. Everything's still the same, I think, for Dread Ball and Dead Zone. The Dead Zone rules are all free online, so you can pick them up and have a look at them as well. And I think, is it Nexus Psy as well? Which is a um, like an expansion for Dead Zone. Um, it's also free at the minute as well. So it's worth uh, worth checking them out, mate. John says he's going to hit the hay as well. Thanks, mate. Nice to see you. Scott's off to bed as well. Yeah, Josie and the schools are still closed. Mark Corley says he's just ordered Dead Zone from Mantic. 40 quid delivered with the slow grow, 20% off code, cheapest chips. That's not bad, mate, is it? That's not bad at all. Um. Claudio's on about escalation as well. Um, Joe's saying to Busey, yeah, uh, glad it went okay. Life's a bit weird right now. I agree. Normality is good. Yeah, anything that gets us close back to normality is not bad at all. Harry's saying Nexus 5 is free. Adam's saying, no, I'm sat here in my office listening to you as I tap away at the computer in between me picking orders. That's nice, mate. Well, I think, I think what I'll do is I'll paint a little bit more um, before we call it a night because... Um, I haven't got to get up for work in the morning. However, my wife does. <laughs> so I've got to get up and be on their, on their child duty. So I'll have a three-year-old that will be waking me up nice and early. So, however, this, this is work for me. I, I'm, I'm at work now. That's the difference. So, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll get some shots of what I've been up to tonight as well. There's, um, let's have a look at this one. This is the one I've just been I've been painting before. It needs to have another kind of I'll do the run the black rim on it again as well. I've just kind of painted some bits of pipes. I'm gonna put a wash. Actually, I'll do that wash now. And then that one's pretty much finished for tonight. I'll get a black wash over the uh, over the grating and stuff. Get that to stand out a little bit. We'll do that now. Actually, I'm gonna use the other water because I've been doing silver with that water. I was clever enough to remember to get two waters to do that. Get that in there and make it a feel a bit more grimy and and dirty. What was that one? Claudio said it's twenty to one in the morning. I've finished all the hype about Dead Zone talk. It was great fun. Nice work there. You're doing it. Thank you very much, mate. Hugely appreciate your support as well, mate, along with everybody else. But yeah, you, um, yeah, Dead Dead Zone's on the way, mate. Do not worry about that. I can't I can't say it's going to happen late like in the next week or something. But it, it, it will be here, I promise. Okay, mate. Um, Thordlum saying Dead Zone was first expansion for Blood Bowl way, way back. Was it really? I didn't know that. Um, Mike G says, only 5.40 here. I got two of those Robo machine things. Is it like 5.40 in the morning, mate? Is it? Wow. Um, Adam says, I'm usually in the showroom at the counter, but trying to keep my distance between the staff. Yeah, stay safe, mate. Crabby Vision saying Dead Zone looks great. What are the minis like? That's my big kind of like sort of tentative thing. Some of the newer ones are very, very nice. Some of the older ones are a bit gash, as they say. Um, so it depends upon what you fancy me. I would say check out the, the web store, have a look, see if there's anything that you like the look of. Um, but to be fair, like a, like a, a I think like a, a, what they're called, like a war band, if you like, for for dead zones about 25 quid uh, and you, you probably get about like 10 15 models in that and it's enough to, to play the game and not worry about it it's only if you start taking it seriously you might want to start kind of like list building and and buying bits and pieces but it's it's not and if you buy that 40 quid starter set there's two factions in there to be fair two factions and the terrain and the mat so there's plenty like uh there's plenty in that starter set it's a good value one um Right. What we have to start. Do you know what it is? I st I st I've been here like, what time did I start? Half past eight, half nine, half ten, half eleven. Three hours and fifteen minutes, and that, that, that's all I've drank. I've still got beer left. Um, my G. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, home of the funds. Um, Claudia says, no worries. Now I feel bad about shouting dead zone all the time. Never feel bad, mate. Never feel bad. I love people to be passionate. About, about the games that they love. That's what I like to see. 
I, like I'd rather see people like you, Claudio, shouting about um, about Dead Zone all the time, rather than the people that bash games all the time. What I don't want to hear is people going, "Oh, that game's a load of crap. You shouldn't play that game." Like that's like I don't want negativity. I only want to hear like people's like passions and the, and the stuff that they love. There's no point telling me what you don't love, <laughs> like. Because we can all judge that for ourselves, but but tell me why you love something, and that's exactly what you've done with Dead Zone, mate. So yeah, don't never feel bad about championing the games that you love, mate. That's for hundred percent for sure. Um, Luke said I need to have a solo run through with Rank Busters soon. I kind of uh, I kind of wish I'd backed Rank Busters because I think the, the the models are fantastic. Adam says, even people who love Blood Bowl, <laughs> even them, mate. Like, I, like I've, I've never said that I hate Blood Bowl. I've just said that I've had bad experiences with Blood Bowl and I don't really think it's my game. But I, I can appreciate there is a lot of people love that game. Um, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that I wouldn't give it another go. <laughs> and Kelly's saying, okay, you asked for a Blitz Bowl. Blitz Bowl, I'd love to try. I'd love to try, Kelly. Somebody um, on a Facebook group after I'd done that sporadically bored podcast was telling me about Blood Bowl 7s. Do you know much about that? Um, is there somewhere where I can find out about that? Apparently it's just like a, like a scaled down version of it. <laughs> Margot says, I love Highland of the Pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never live that Highland of the Down, will I? Uh, Steve's saying, Andy, can I do slow grow on Dead Zone Dread Ball minis? Uh, will, will, will I catch up this week? What points are you up to? <laughs> Stephen Bonner, I know what your patent's like. You'll catch up by the end of this stream, and I'm finishing soon. <laughs> um, Busey says, no, that's normal. <laughs> yeah. Um, Claudio there is just saying back before, if you have any questions about minis or something, link me on a Facebook. I will do, mate. Thank you. Uh, Roxanne's in as well, saying, just finished Walking Dead solo game, Battle Systems test game, and had the live chat as background soundtrack. Looking forward to seeing those panel finished. Night all. Thanks, Roxanne. Appreciate you coming in. Kelly said I was bringing Blitzball to Adepticon. Oh, I will at some point have to try it, or I'll have to try and get one imported or something like that at some point, and see what I can do. Um, especially with there's there's a new there's a new season coming out, isn't there? Um, which is like I think it's like a standalone thing though, so you can still play it. So I'll, maybe I'll have to uh, do a bit of digging into that and find out more about it. Um, how are we doing for time? I tell you what I'm going to do, folks. I'm going to keep going for another 10 minutes or something, which will take me up to midnight here. And I really must try and get some sleep because I'll be up at like six <laughs> with my little guy. So yeah, I am. So we'll pin for a little bit more. We've got, we've still got like 40 people in the chat. We've, we've got, we've had some good numbers tonight. It's been pretty consistent. So, um, even, even three hours in, we're still, still got folks here. And then, and do you know what the difference is folks? I, if I was sitting painting, I'd have stopped painting ages ago tonight. I wouldn't still be sitting here painting. So the live streams are useful for me as well. And to be honest, I think like, if, you, if anybody watches Gorilla Miniature Games, um, they'll, they'll know that like, um, Ash does his uh, like what's on the table video, like once a week, which shows kind of what he's been painting and things. Um, and I guess these live streams really are almost a case of like, in the future, if I'm sitting painting, like, I might as well pop a camera on and we can kind of hang out together because I'll, I'll have a lot more stuff to paint to kind of to keep on top of like new stuff for videos and things as well. Stuff that I've like to, to the level I've not like done in the past. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's something I'll probably look into as well. How, how do I kind of keep that interaction and stuff? Um, Cliff's saying that Blitz, Blitzball's fun. His friends have got a podcast called The Crush. All Blitzball. I might listen to that, mate. I quite, I quite like it. Um, I quite like a podcast. And all the podcasts I listen to at the minute, I'm up to date with everything. So I haven't got anything new to listen to. Because what I've been doing is when I've been going on my, uh, I used to listen when I was driving and stuff with work, but obviously I'm not driving now so much. But I've been listening. Like just on the night time when I go to bed or I've been listening um when I've been going on my exercise walks to get getting out of the house for a bit. Um yeah, it's been uh so I've kind of chomped through all the stuff I, I normally listen to. 
but I'm, I'm need, I need some of you listening. Um, let's just get a bit in there. Uh, Cliff saying, yeah, season two, humans and dwarves. It's a shame it's humans, like, to be fair, but uh, I would have liked to see something else. Tony said, I was going to buy Blitzball while I lived at Recon. I, <laughs> to be fair, mate, I was as well. Um, Steve says, Andy, link me to, to the mini chat too, please. Got plenty from the original Kickstarter for Dead Zone. Um, to the mini chat. Are you, are you already in the Facebook group, mate? I thought you were. Let me get a link for you. And I'll copy it across. Um, where are we at? Let me get here. I go here. There you go, mate. That just completely, uh, oh, it is. I hope that's I hope that's still streaming, folks, because <laughs> I, I zoned out of my. Uh... Oh yeah, it is still going, isn't it? Please tell me it's still going. <laughs> yes, it is. I clicked off the screen where it uh, starts the streaming thing. Uh... Where are we at? Mark's in Stacklewolf here, sneaking in briefly from work. Nice to be here. Nice to see you, Mark. How are you doing? How's tricks? It's interesting when we're streaming a little bit later tonight. I'm getting a bit of a different uh, different crowd in of folks who are picking up at different times and things. Um, Kelly says, off topic, but if you like the Opus brushes, try Raphael. I've heard good things about Raphael brushes. Um, Adam's saying, um, been downloading 99 pence Black Library books and listening to them. Yeah, I saw that they, they've been doing that, GW, haven't they? They've been having a one each week. I might have to look into that myself, mate. I'll look to be fair. I think I did a humble bundle thing ages ago and got loads of the um, Horus Heresy audio books on that. I should probably put them on my phone because they're all just sitting on the, in my humble bundle account at the minute. Um, more folks, if you like, if you like listening to philosophical lectures, highly recommend Manly Hall. I'll check that out, mate. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. saying, no, it stopped working. What? <laughs> Marcus says, good night all. Steve's in cheers, mate. I'm in the group already, but sometimes miss interest and post when scrolling. Yeah, no worries, man. Uh, John Kellogg says, brought me to the end of my painting for the day after hearing you talk about Blitzball. I'm looking into buying one. Have a hook up at Barnes and Nobles. To be honest, mate, I'm, I'm sure there was some kind of like back, back door thing where if you paid for it with PayPal, it would allow you to pay and import it into the UK or something like that. But I know somebody else was trying it um, and said it hadn't worked for them. But uh, yeah, I might. I don't even know how much it is. I, I assume it's not very much. It's just shipping to the UK would probably be uh, would be the, the most expensive bit, I'd imagine. It's just a shame they don't sell it in the UK. Is it something that you can... Is, are, are the rules something you could play with a normal Blood Bowl set? Is it a completely different size board? I don't really know that much about it, to be fair. Um, wait, wait, what are we going to do with this? Whereabouts are we? I think this needs a little bit more. It just it doesn't feel like it's popping so much, this one. But this one's got a um, like a big cloak as well, and I think that's why there's not as much armour. I'm just going to try and lighten up these. Oh, let's get it back on camera. Try and lighten up these a little bit, I think. Well, do you know what it is, folks? I've taken a lot more kind of care and attention with these than I think I intentionally in intended to at the start. But um, I've enjoyed painting them. I'm looking forward to the Cold One stuff coming, the Operation Colstrom. Um, yeah, be good. Be good when it arrives. Um, Cliff says smaller board, but you can use minis from Blood Bowl. Yeah, I thought it was a case. Um. Steve says, no armoured butchers. Did you even paint the mini? No armoured butchers, what we're talking about again. No armoured butchers. Oh, I can't even remember, mate. Uh, it's, get, it's getting late now. Um, yeah, reduce size board. Reduces rules, but same minis. Less players on the board. And gee, daddies. I wonder if that's what this um, seven... Oh, butt cheeks. Oh, yeah, no butt cheeks on this one. No. It's got a cloak on it. Um, 
Adam says, uh, sorry, Cl Cliff saying it's forty five dollars. That's not too bad, is it? So yeah, sorry, that's what I was going to say. So is that what this um, Blood Bowl sevens is like then? Is that just a, is is it a rule set that essentially basically takes the best from from Blitz Bowl and kind of scales it down for for standard Blood Bowl? Although to be fair, I'm enjoying their uh, Dread Bowl at the minute, so maybe I don't need it. But I would like to try it just to kind of just to have an opinion on it, really, because it's not something. Because uh, I think if, if you could buy it in the UK, I'd probably be tempted to pick it up. But I'm not. I, I, what I don't want to do is to pay like forty five dollars for it and then pay like another fifty dollars shipping. Uh, yeah, Christian. Oh, sorry, Christian. I didn't realize you were still in me. I thought you. I thought you'd gone. It says uh, the PayPal workaround for getting Blitzbolt the UK no longer works. Barnes and Noble figured out what was happening and blocked it. I thought that was the case, mate. I had heard that it wasn't working anymore. Yeah, they worked it out, yeah. I still don't know why it's not available over here. Um, it's got challenge cards. Ah, that's I have heard of that, mate. Yeah, thank you. Um, you score points without making a touchdown. I like the sound of that. Claudia says, looking forward to Friday. We'll have a Skype stream and drink with a good buddy, Semper. Please say hi to him for me, mate. It'd be nice to sit there see how he's doing. Uh, he didn't do any war gaming for about five months now. New solutions. Yeah, please pass on my best wishes, mate. I hope he's well. Um, Mark's in his phone. Blood Bowl is on the PC rather than the physical game. Yeah, I've, I've played it on uh, like uh, Xbox and stuff as well. Mark says, just ask Skull Munch. I bought him a copy of Blitz Bowl. I remember you saying, mate, about did anybody want one bringing back? And I must admit, I was really tempted at the time, but I, I was trying to, trying to keep on top of my spends, like to not, not buy frivolous stuff because I was trying to save every penny I could at the time. So, yeah, it's, uh, it was nice of you to bring one back for him, mate. Um, right, how we doing? Yeah, it's nearly 12 now, folks. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean my brushes here. So I'll keep, I'll keep it on while I'm just washing my brush out. Just to, uh, just to say goodbye to everybody. Yeah, I just want like, to say absolutely been awesome. Awesome again, folks. I've had a lovely night. It's like hanging out with friends, um, and it gives me a it gives me a chance to kind of get everybody together, chat again, talk about games, talk about everything. Um, yeah, just generally just just chill out. Uh, probably seeing Star Saga looks good as well. To be honest, Star Saga, mate, the minis that come in Star Saga, you can use to make up two Dead Zone teams as well. So there's a lot of crossover between their sci-fi stuff. Um, <laughs> Claudio saying will do. He painted a lot of armor and stitched tunics and stuff. Ah, nice, mate. It's nice that he's been keeping busy anyway. That's good stuff. Right, folks. It's not a bad stream, is it? How long are we going? Three and a half hours? I think that's my longest stream ever anyway. And I haven't lost my voice. Uh, cool. Right. Thanks again, folks. It's been an awesome night. Um, everyone stay safe. Uh, we'll speak in the Discord group. We'll speak in the Facebook group. We'll, um, let me just fit across here. Yeah, we'll, we'll speak in the main groups and stuff like that over the next few days. If I don't see, speak to you before, I, I'm not sure if I'll have another video this week. But if not, I'll certainly see you all on Monday's live stream. Um, and if, if we'll sort something out for, for getting together as well to, um, to, to have a chat through Saturday's um, reveal stuff as well. So, take care folks, and I'll see you later.